Metallica, here they come, the kings of metal. Hey, this is Jay Weinberg from Slipknot, and you're listening to Metal Up Your Podcast. Welcome to Metal Up Your Podcast. I'm Ethan Luck. And I'm Clint Wells. This is episode 99, and we're going to be talking some Metallica with our, uh, our new friend, Darren Edwards. Yeah, so Darren, he does press and promo, marketing, label management for the rock bands on Warner, Roadrunner, he works with Slash, Slipknot, Mastodon, Slayer, Zach Watt, every cool rock band in the world. Right. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. Hey, Darren, how you doing? Good, guys. Good. How you doing? Welcome to HQ2. You're yeah. one of the few. I'm loving it, man. It's, that have been uh, here. Yeah. First thing I see is the Gibson. There Looking you go. Yeah. yeah. As you can tell, uh, Darren is not from here. He's from Australia. However, lives in Sweden. Sweden! There it is. There it is. Now, he's also a massive Metallica fan, and uh, Darren and I got to have coffee a few months ago and talk absolutely. about music and life, and now he's, you know, feels like we're, we're buddies from yeah, afar. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And he's also uh, a fan of the show, so we're going to talk all sorts of Metallica. We're going to do a Metal Madness. Um, we're going to talk about his career, and hopefully he's going to give us some juicy stories about... Uh, Slashes STDs. I don't know. We n- yeah, you never know. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. Before we do that, we're going to try to blow through the housekeeping shit real quick. Do you want to get started on housekeeping? Yeah, let's get right into this stuff. Uh, we have an iTunes. You can go leave us a review. It's really easy to do. It takes no time. It helps us go a long way and get more recognized in iTunes, in that universe. Uh, it's real basic. It takes no time. Go do it. You know how to do the you thing. You can't say things are basic anymore because that's the kids now... That's some sort of smear in kids, is it? what the kids say. She's basic. He's basic. Uh, okay. Well, it's very easy to do. I can't say that either. Really? Crap. <laughs> easy um, was more of an 80s, 90s thing okay. to say that a woman was uh, had many lovers. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, you can't say anything anymore, It really. is of nothing to go <laughs> to uh, the uh, Intelligent Tunes and leave us a review and a rating. <laughs> is that what I stands for? Uh, I'm pretty sure like iMac is intelligent, yeah. You know anything about that, Darren? No. Okay. No, no. no. Okay. Well, I, I'm choosing to believe that, you. That means that, I, that I'm right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> now, we have another thing called Patreon, which is a deeper level to get involved with the show. You can support us financially. You're going to hear a whole commercial about that later. In the meantime, we got a shitload of new patrons. We got a bunch this week, yeah. And part of the reason, I believe, is because we've got this Injustice for All box set that's sitting right here in between Ethan and Darren. And uh, we're going to be giving that away at the end of the month. $180, $190 value. It's pretty amazing. I kind of made the mistake of cracking it open today before Oops. you guys got here and uh, for the first time really got the bug, like, I need to get one of these. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty amazing. And it's it's way thicker than the other ones. Even the artwork on the top is bigger than the, uh, the first There's three. There's so much shit in there. And at the very minimum, you get the Seattle 89 show on vinyl mixed by Greg Fiddleman. Yeah, pretty pretty awesome. Riff tapes, demos, other live shows, all patches, stuff, patches, laminates, yeah. all that stuff. They, they go all out with these things, man. So they, they don't hold back. We're going to give one of those away to our patrons to say thank you. At the very minimum, we give them a shout-out on the show. Do you want to start us off here? Yeah, we're going to start off here. We have Vixtor. That's a cool name. That might. You know what? I'm uh, looking right now. The X is right by the C on the old keyboard. That's probably a typo. Probably a typo. So probably pro- Victor. Pro- probably Victor. Okay, Victor Ghani. <laughs> uh, Morton Egan, Caroline Fraley, Clint Cron. Cran. Another one of the Clints. Crahan. Uh, Eric Hinton, Jonathan Nor- Nordstrand. We got Lauren Singh, Jeff Kozak, Josh B- Bombino, the great Bombino, Claire West, David Bill increases pledge, and Matthew Kerr sent us ten dollars and said, "You guys have been kicking ass lately. Go get yourselves a cup of coffee." Awesome. That's what he said. Yeah, that's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. very nice guy. Thought that was cool. I that, will, and you know what? I will. In Sweden, that's one cup of coffee. <laughs> Is it? Scandinavia is expensive. It's half a cup of coffee. Event. If you're from um, America, yeah, Norway. Ridiculous. Oh, forget it. Norway is so expensive. Well, let's compare. Are we comparing it to like maybe like a London or a Berlin? Or uh, a... Norway has got Norway is one of the most expensive countries I've been to. As is Australia is getting that way, at least with our dollar. Yeah. Back in the day, Australia was like half off. Dude, when I left Australia, it was nothing. When I went back after like fifteen years, 
and uh, I got shot. I think they thought I was smoking crack because mm-hmm. I was like questioning what cheeseburger is what. Yeah, you know, it's ridiculous. They're like you are yeah. Australian, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. You you know, you're talking Australian and. Uh, couldn't couldn't grasp how expensive it was. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy, yeah. There's actually a really funny Jim Brewer segment that he did with Metallica called uh, You're Out of Touch. You're out of touch. Where he's asking them like how much are how much is a gallon of milk? And Kirk's answers are pretty funny. One, because he's out of touch. The motherfucker's been rich for a long time. You're out of touch. <laughs> Two, he lives in Hawaii where shit really is pretty expensive. Maybe yeah, not yeah. Norway expensive. But right. Like a gallon of milk's like six bucks over there. Sure. Uh, Switzerland is by far the most expensive country I've been to. It's you, insanely expensive there. I'm going to pivot us away from the world economics segment. Oh, damn it. <laughs> if you guys don't <laughs> mind. Um, so go over, sign up at patreon.com slash middle of your podcast to be entered into uh, the drawing for this. We're going to give out the whiskey to. We tr- we, we've been taking a few months off, but we've always been trying to give shit away to people. Right, yeah. We're not stopping doing that because we no longer want to do that. It's just we've been busy. That's, yeah, it's simple absolutely. as that. Yeah. Uh, the OG Metal Up Your Podcast shirts. We have this new logo, the Dagger logo, I'm affectionately calling it. Right, yeah. The OG shirts that you made with the M Very first and black. Ones, yeah. People want that shirt. You can go get that shirt now. Go find us on the social. Speaking of the socials. Yeah, we have socials, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Search Metal Up Your Podcast, you'll find us. Follow us there. We post all sorts of fun stuff, do live videos sometimes. Um, and go to web- our website, metalupyourpodcast.com. You can also email us if you want to get a hold of us swiftly. Uh, Metal Up Your Podcast Show at gmail.com. And uh, that's the social world. Right Do there. you want to maybe talk about the party briefly? Briefly. We've mentioned this the last few episodes. Uh, January 23rd, 2019, the night before Metallica plays Nashville, we'll be having a pre party slash two year anniversary party for the podcast at the Cobra in East Nashville. It's going to be fun. We're going to have we'll probably some giveaways. We're going to have a whole merch table set up for stuff. Maybe a little performance by me and Clint. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, and people, Jim Brewer might show up. Who knows? Who knows? It's the night before the I'll show. I'll just so. say that. Yeah, who well, knows? I do know that a couple of the Metallica crew will be there. Um, so that's that. We read a few emails every week. We like to check in with the Metal Up Your Podcast family. We're going to do that right now in the email corner. <laughs> All right, our first email is from Jake Sarche, who is a patron. Uh, please note, uh, please, please note, if this is read on the show, it must be an Ethan's Aussie accent. Oh boy! G'day, How about bro. having here Darren here too for this? I love this. I'm gonna oh, watch man. now. Now yeah, the, the pressure is on. The man. last few times I've tried it, I've morphed into like a British Cockney thing. Okay, I'll try. Good eye, brothers. Just want to say another well done for the giant of you. Slipknot is my second favorite band next to Metallica. That was good, right, Metallica? That's pretty good, yeah, Metallica. Add a few more mates, Metallica, right. mate. <laughs> Mate, I only have two band logos as tattoos, Ninja Star from the Load Era, and the Slipknot S. Was super stoked uh, that you guys asked my question, mates. Uh, thanks, Patreon perks. Bruce Springsteen also holds a dear spot in me heart, <laughs> as, it, as, it, as it was the last show my father and I went to. Uh, mates, it was so awesome to hear about the history with the boss. Uh, keep up the, con- the constant quality that we all know and love. Jake from Perth, New Jersey, mate. mate. Bad, that was right? pretty good. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. It's more of, I think, of a Sydney, probably, like, you know, maybe that era, or area, because I know that Melbourne's a little more uh, casual, kind of, in their, in their in their accent, but I don't know. Yeah. I literally have nothing of value to add to I this. I have a few from Australia, I'm just trying to do their accent, so. I have a friend from Fern Tree Gully. Oh, no shit. I've a heard of that. Absolutely. Real place. Yeah. It's a very Australia, Australian sounding. I know the cartoon Fern Gully. Right. This is Fern Tree Gully, Okay. Right. right. Right on, mate. Well, I, what he's talking about with the Patreon perks is so when we have a guest like Jay Weinberg of Slipknot, you can ask them questions via the Patreon right, and we'll yeah. try to get them to him. So we did that with Ray Burton, which is going to be our next episode. Right. So, all right. Right on. Very cool. Moving along. Eric Hinton, who's a new patron, says, hey, Clinton Ethan, I'm sorry for taking so long to become a patron. We forgive you. I've honestly been a fan since February of last year when you guys had only a couple of episodes out, and I've listened to every episode since. Loved everything you guys have done uh, for all of the all of us who share the love of all things Metallica. 24 from Tampa, Florida. Been a fan since a very young age, riding in the car with my dad, listening to the radio and sharing his CDs. Loved everything rock and metal. But majority of every song I liked was a Metallica song. From uh, Leaning Over Me, singing along with the songs like Puppet, Sandman, Fuel, and Sanitarium, Instantly hooked as a kid. Growing older and being more knowledgeable of music, I became even more of a fan. Wore Metallica shirts to school. Was made fun of a lot because they were old and sellouts, (laughs) but I didn't give a shit. Meaning, 
people accuse, I guess people were accusing Metallica of being sellouts when he was in school. That was like an insult in school. I guess. I mean, if you're 24, so like, what, 10 to 14 years ago? I'm sorry, uh, 10 to 6 years ago? Here we go to the math section of the show. Yeah, here's the math segment. Where Do we have I'm, a jingle for the math segment? I'm going to come up with one. It's going to be like six minutes long. It's going to be a doom metal song. And the, and the global <laughs> economic segment, too. <laughs> uh, his, his dad took him to his first show October 2009 when he was 14 on the Death Magnetic Tour. They played Harvester through the Never and Trapped Under Ice as Deep Cuts. So badass. Uh, also got to see them in Orlando on the past stadium tour. Was on the floor with my dad and good friend. This dude's dad has been helping him get this, hip to this shit, yeah, man. This, uh, props to this uh, to Eric's dad, man. Dad of the year. Metallica and metal music is something my dad and I bond over, and we are always excited to see the set list come out for each show. We're going to try hard to come up to Nashville and be there for the party as well. I know it's coming up close, but we'll figure it out. Clint, personally want to thank you for opening my eyes to the loads. Love both those records. St. Anger is meh. And I love Death Magnetic and Hardwired. Favorite albums, Puppets. Top three songs are Creeping Death Black and Damage Inc. Again, thank you guys for everything and making me feel a part of something. And I get to share a common interest with so many others you've brought together. Hoping and wishing you guys get to meet the boys one day and hope to meet you guys and grab a beer, Eric Hinton. Well, I love that I've become an ambassador for Load and Reload. Darren was telling me just today that he he's supports my love for those records. You really have turned on a lot of people to it. I'm waiting to get the fucking Medal of Honor from uh, Metallica camp any day now. Just foggily a meet and greet for you. At least a hardwired experience, or three. At the very least, at least one for you and your friends. Meet me, you and Darren. I mean, maybe a, maybe a load and reload platinum record. Would that kill anybody? <laughs> I don't jeez, know. Maybe on. invite me to come join and play guitar with them to do a whole night of playing load and reload songs. I mean, jeez, come on, Q Prime, get on it. But you're a load reload. You like those records? I like those records. Because you're big. You're big original four too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the other ones. Um, mm-hmm. First time I went to America, I went around uh, uh, with a couple of friends, and we had the um, Aqua. You know, the Barbie girl. We had that cassette. Oh, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Exactly. And I had Reload. So we had literally those two flip-flop for like two weeks mm, on the road. Wow. So what a tough choice. What a yeah. tough choice. We, maybe we can do a Metal Madness uh, pitting Aqua against Metallica. <laughs> I forgot that band was called Aqua. I'm Aqua, Barbie absolutely. Girl. Was that Australian? Were they Australian? No, they're... Um, I think they're Finnish. They're, Finnish. Oh, okay. they're, they're somewhere Scandinavian somewhere. Okay, okay. Yeah. Were you guys like really listening to that record? Did you guys like it? Yeah, the uh, one of the guys actually I was with liked it. So okay. either that or he kind of hated the fact that I like Metallica. Right. So uh, Just for every to... for every listen right. of one, we had to have a listen of the other. I okay. can see it in terms of like restoring balance to the universe. Yep. Sure. It, philosophically, it makes sense. I can see it as a way to break a friendship, that's for sure. <laughs> or forge one. Never know. If you can get down to Reload and Aqua... You things covered gonna, so yeah. much ground. Everything in between is going to be that just everything, great. anything is possible. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the email. Thank you, Eric. Uh, next email is from Scott Richmond. He said, "Lads, uh, I'm keen for an Injustice remastered episode. Well, don't worry, it's coming. Uh, I love how we get to hear the riff tapes uh, with all the remasterings. I think uh, this remastering release has the most interesting riff tapes to date. Uh, shame there's none of Kirk's riffs hardwired much." Um, I would love to hear Dire's Eve if it kept going down the same route uh, in the demo. It's funny how the original main riff in the demo turned out uh, uh, turned into an alternate fleeting riff, and then for a bridge, it naturally kicked into uh, fucking Harvester. Uh, like this song could not get any better. Uh, the, the the leads the leads really show James's natural talent for melody and interesting harmony. Uh, love from Byron Bay, Australia. Another Australian there. Uh, well, good day, Mike. Um, yeah, there's some cool stuff on the Justice box set. On the, on the, I've, I've listened to the riff tapes like on Spotify because I haven't seen this thing in person. Yeah, I listened to about them. an hour ago, but they're interesting. There's some cool stuff in there. Uh, that or even just the demos. There's like little tidbits in there that are a little different. Have you heard any of this yet? It's on no, Spotify. No, I haven't. One of the first two things you hear is Blackened from James, and it's like from James's riff tapes, mm-hmm. and it it's Jason teaching them how to play. Boom, bam, bam, ba, da, da, bam, yeah. ba, da, da. And it's kind of fun and funny, and like you know, they're trying to work it out. That's a complicated riff, right? Yeah. But they're kind of fucking with Jason the whole time. Like at one point, Lars is like, "Dude, you're going to be great in the studio. I can tell." <laughs> Jason's like, "Dude, I'm just excited." And James, James is like leaning. I guess there was a microphone or something that they were recording into, and James keeps leaning, going, "Jason's a dick." <laughs> I'm like, "Damn, man, that hazing was real. That was real. It, it was, yeah. It that was is real. no joke." And also, of course, fascinating to hear how certain riffs end up somewhere. There's one of To Live Is To Die, and it's James, I guess, working out his solo. 
So it's only a minute long. It's just his. It's like he played like on a two track or three track recorder, played the rhythm, and then he played his solo. It's kind of sloppy, but it's that right. solo. Yeah, it's cool. the one. Well, they, for a while we were, we were you know like, did he actually play that? Because he's not credited in the record of right. doing so. But obviously, over time, people say, "Oh, that's James. That's he James." Did. He did. Oh, he he did, did it. it. All right. Thanks, Scott. Jeff Kozak, another patron, says, "Dudes, just started uh, episode eighty-four, which I have no idea which one that was." Oh, I can already see what's I can already see what's happening in this email here. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Eighty-four and heard my first email to you guys. I was on the best solos episode and had fifty more to catch up. Making Clint do math. Here we go. <laughs> That's a uh, that equals a thousand and seventeen. That's right. I'm a trucker in northern Alberta, Canada, New Jersey, and I'm away from home a lot. So hearing you guys read my email made my day. Cool. One thing I wanted to share with you is something I heard you guys chat about a few episodes back, where someone was explaining why they like metal, or in this case, Metallica. I've been a metalhead since I was first introduced to Metallica when I was fourteen. I'm forty-five now. Clint, do the math. That's seventeen thousand eight hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been on the ride for a long time. Three years ago, I got together with my wonderful girlfriend and her kids who just didn't understand. One thing we do is go camping together, listen to music, and enjoy the campfire for hours. The girlfriend was cring- cringing to my Slipknot, Bullet for My Valentine, many others, and of course, The Mighty Met. I explained the complexities, the emotional ups and downs, and had them really dive in. I've since brought her to a Slipknot show, the whole family to a second Slipknot show. Black Label Society show and others, they now have season passes on the ride as well with no signs of letting go. Yeah, nice. That is cool. Very cool. Thanks for the anecdotes. I can re- relate to a lot of them, which make me feel like we're all a big Met family. Again, love you guys, and thanks for making the drive shorter and fun. Here's to another 84. How many is that, Clint? Jeff Kozak. Well, obviously, that comes up to about 34. Exactly. 84 plus 87. Yeah. And cue the mathematics. <coughs> I have uh, the segment. Yeah, Totally. I have I have one time where this really clicked with me. It was my first wife. We were we were young. It was when the second Perfect Circle record came out. Are you guys, I don't know if you guys are into Perfect Circle at all. A little bit. Should okay. have brought you a record, huh? Should have brought you the record. You had the new record. I got it. Eat the elephant. I do have it, dude. It's fucking. I, awesome. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I haven't heard it yet. Um, it's real different. It's yeah. very piano heavy and it's beautiful though. I like pianos. And, and lyrically, it's pretty important. I think for the times, but the uh, their second record's called um, the Thirteenth Step. And the first song on it's called The Package. And the whole record is about dealing with addiction. That's why it's called 13th Step. The 13th yeah. step is living the rest of your life. Right, 12-step tw- program. Right. Course. Now, The Package is introducing this character, and this character is like a junkie or something. And the whole song is basically from the point of view of them wanting this package. It's their drugs in the mail. Right. And my first wife, she hated A Perfect Circle. She hated aggressive music. But I was kind of explaining all that to her. And I'm not like a fucking analyst or anything but i was just like i helped her kind of see what the song was of course yeah and she was like hey play it one more time and we listened to it together and it completely opened her up to it right of course, and then yeah. she was a fan of it that's awesome that's a satisfying feeling very satisfying what about you your is your lady like all the stuff you you work with yeah she's pretty cool with it actually yeah yeah, yeah definitely into it are you a bring your work home kind of guy are you like listening to heavy music at home i'm a little work all the time kind of guy yeah so that's a so right. there's no you're getting working around. right now I'm working You're right You're working now. right now, yeah. Right this second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're paying you top dollar for this. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else to say about that. It just made me think of that. I think it's cool that you got his family on board. Yeah, it's so awesome. That's really cool. Because you want to be able to share the stuff with the people you care about. That's right. It makes it hard if you don't. Yeah. Got to be honest. If you're into it, it makes it really hard if, if they're not. Yeah, my, my wife doesn't like heavy music at all, but then there's the music she listens to that I, I can't stand. Like, I don't care for Morrissey at all. She loves Morrissey or like... She, she's way into Radiohead, and I like a lot of Radiohead records, but there's some I just can't take. So there, but there's a lot of middle ground we're both into, which is you don't have to be into everything together, you know. And if she doesn't want to be into Metallica, that's fine. Well, and, and two, there's a difference between her like it not being her cup of tea, and her being like okay with me having Metallica shit all over my studio, and do, do dedicating a lot of my free time to the podcast. Oh, she, like, yeah, she's my really knows, supportive yeah, of my all that. Knows how it is. Like she, she knows that like this is what Ethan loves to do, and, he, and he, especially doing the podcast. When, you know, he gets together once a week with Clint and. They geek out, and she just rolls her eyes and goes, have fun. She doesn't care for it, but... Honey, she loves you, therefore she loves Metallica. That's right. You know, in turn, she loves she loves the boys. And my wife's actually seen a Metallica show, too. So yeah, great. She felt compelled to go with me because it was my birthday, so... Is that the one in Australia? Yeah, when I saw him in Australia. The Australia the connection the first time. insane. Yeah, my first time, yeah, yeah, on the Death Magnetic Tour. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that was in uh, Brisbane. Yeah, where I'm from. Yeah. yeah. Were you there? I wasn't there. Two uh-huh. worlds colliding... <laughs> Almost. Uh, all right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next email is from Morton Egan, who's also a patron. Hello, guys. I'm Morton from Norway. That's crazy. I know another Morton from Norway. All Mortons come from Norway. Norway colliding. Ooh. Um, so he knows what we're talking about by spending a lot of money. 
Uh, I recently found the show and I love it. I started from the top and now I'm on episode 32 of the Detroit recap. That seems like forever ago. I was just going to say the same thing. Um, can't wait to catch up. Uh, hearing you guys talk about the stadium shows really gets me pumped for the European stadium tour next summer. Going to see them in Sweden and Norway. It will be my seventh and eighth show. Uh, I did also see them on the European Arena Tour this year in Poland and Norway. Killer shows. Um, uh, I listened to the uh, I listened to the whole your whole sorry I listened to you the whole day at work, and you make you guys make time fly. I love the good chemistry between you guys. It makes uh, it makes it really great to listen to. Keep up with the good work. If you are in Norway sometime, beers on me. Well, that's good because I can't afford beers in Norway. The eighteen thousand dollar beer will be yeah, on you. It's expensive. I do remember, and this is probably fifteen years ago, being in Norway playing a small little festival. Uh, in this town called Kragoro. And uh, my wife and I went next door to this little, it was a uh, restaurant that had all sorts of stuff from all over the world, you know, American food, Italian, whatever. And we got one big pizza and like two beers, and it was like $56 American or something crazy. Wow. I was like, cool, uh, I'll be eating croissants all week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our last email is from new patron Clint Cron. And I just got to say, anytime I meet a fellow Clint in the world, because there are really only about 20 of us. There's only, yeah. That uh, it's a special thing for me. I often joke yeah. about that I want to form like a, a traveling intramural volleyball team. I don't know if there's another Ethan that's written to the show, so you, you, you must feel great. But you know that Ethan is not an uncommon name, just in life. It's not super common. It's more common than Clint. I don't know about that. You think Clint is less common than Ethan? Yes! What, what say you? I would say Ethan, actually. I, oh I know quite goodness. a few Clints. Really? Yeah. Maybe I've got yeah, it all mate. wrong. See what's happening here? Aussie, pa- oh. Aussie power. That's a goddamn mutiny over here, mate. <laughs> well, maybe I'm, I'm going to have to reevaluate that. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, all right. Well, one of, the, one of the millions of Clint's writes in and says, Good morning. Loving your podcast. Stumbled across it shortly after the tour kicked <sighs> off and just signed up on Patreon today. Thank you. Been a huge Met fan since the early 90s. An Outlaw Corn member, which that's my favorite chapter name, by the that's way. That's a great, great name. The Outlaw Corn. Outlaw Corn. Um, and hit as many shows as I can. The Metal Tales from the Road are fantastic. Awesome to hear the recap from the shows you personally went to, which he went to Lincoln and Sioux Falls. Uh, he says, and also from shows across the country. Always looking forward to the next episode, slowly getting through the back catalog, but chasing two kids and work makes for slow and steady progress. Uh, believe me, homie, I know that. Um, on a side note, I work for a promotional company in Sioux Falls. We can offer just about anything you can imagine, from flash drives, pens, T-shirts, drinkware, to custom fishing lures, Ooh. we can get it done. That's the metal up your podcast fan base is dying for some metal some fishing up your lures. Fishing yeah, lures. I think that's a that's in demand product right now. He says, if I can assist with any promo items, feel free to reach out. Thanks again for the great work you guys do. Well, Clint, you might awesome. be doing that. I. Uh, How many fishermen uh, out there, or, or fisher women, would like? If the demand is high enough. I mean, I mean, especially if it's the old school logo or original logo, that that M. Could hook hook it, fish right through the cheek. Oh my god! I, and then the lawsuit from Metallica would be what two months following that. So yeah, that's fine. No problem. It gives us at least two months left for the podcast. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's that easy. You can write in the show, metal up your podcast show at gmail dot com. That's right. And we'll uh, read it on the show, probably or not. Now I want to talk to our friend Darren. So let's get the hell out of here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Hey, this is Ethan and Clint from Metal Up Your Podcast, and we want to talk to you about something we love called Patreon. That's right. Patreon is a way for fans of the show to give back to the show to donate money that uh, helps us in quality and content. And not only that, but we've actually come up with all sorts of fun incentives to give back to you for supporting the show. Exactly. For instance, if you donate $5 or more, you get access to Cover Our World Blackened, which is the official Metal Up Your Podcast Metallica cover EP. That's right, and that's the only way to get it. In addition to the EP, we also give you priority email access, meaning we'll read your email first on the show. We give you early access to Patreon-exclusive merchandise, Patreon-exclusive giveaways, and any other side projects that Ethan and I might be involved in. There's all sorts of things you can look at on there and you can donate to. Go check it out, patreon.com slash metal up your podcast. How do you spell that, Clint? P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash metal up your podcast. And if you really think about it, $5 a month for an entire year, that's really just like a cup of coffee a month. So go check it out. Thanks, everyone. Peace. Adios. All right, Darren, after having to sit there and listen to us talk about how much people like us, which I find embarrassing when we have a guest. Right. Now tell us how much you like us. Now tell us how much you like <laughs> us and yourself. Well, I, I like that segment because that's literally how we first met. That's right. Yeah. You know, when I reached out to you, so it's a, it's a valuable, valuable segment. Really what, was cool. it like to, what was it like to be on this side of it and sit here and watch that? That must have been a trip. Um, yeah, well, it's very professional, i got to say. 
<laughs> it's so crazy watching two dudes read from pieces of paper. Dude, I met, I met a dude when I was on tour uh, in the Pacific Northwest somewhere, maybe Portland. And for the first few minutes, it was pretty awkward because he, it, we ended up being cool later, but he was like, it's so weird to hear your voice, but see it coming out of your face. Right. Because yeah. he's just used to hearing it in his car or whatever. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, sometimes, especially if you don't maybe uh, follow us on social media or see our, our photo or anything, you just hear that voice all the time. And then you have an idea in your head of what that person might look like. You know, when I've listened to it, whether it's like talk radio or other podcasts of, of someone I don't know. I totally do that. Then I see a picture of him. I'm like, oh, wow, there's six, eight and, you know, Italian or something. You know, it's not what I expect usually. Hmm. So I get it, you know. This is pretty crazy how um, you got everyone from, from Australia to, to Norway, you know, to Canada. It is like a trip, it's, um, yeah. yeah. It must be pretty trippy for you guys. Well, especially like yeah. on, on, on the service we use for putting this out called Simplecast, on the back end of it, we can actually look at a map of where people are listening. And right. it is worldwide. It's it's mind-blowing to look at. It and it's cool. Like, I attribute that to the the power of the band. You know, the yeah, band, yeah. the band, because like, you know, there are a lot of bands I love that really America is kind of where they make their stake they stake their claim that's yeah. where for them to travel outside of the states would be they'd be playing clubs or having to like duke it up or drum it up over there but for a band like metallica like they've really touched every part of the planet yeah it's yeah. pretty mm-hmm. cool oh yeah yeah absolutely but, it, but it's also not to kiss your ass too much but it's it's <laughs> it's testimony to Go on. Uh, to to how good it is how good oh, you guys thanks. are oh, how great you. job that you guys are doing that you know you're nearly 100 episodes in and mm-hmm. uh you know, people all around the world. It's yeah, yeah good Thanks, work, man. guys. Well, that's good been work. our episode, everybody. On that note, <laughs> yeah, good night. Well, and I know you you co-host a radio show yourself, exactly. So yeah. I, I want to hear about all that. Yeah, but let's for sure. let's take it back. Like, so getting into rock music. Obviously, you were a kid growing up in Brisbane, in Brisbane, Australia. Yep. And what was your sort of um, what was your coming on point music? The gateway. Yeah. Um, the gateway was probably ACDC, Twisted Sister. You know, those, and how old were you? I would say. Um, Probably early teens. Okay. You know, early teens. I yeah. got an older brother, which kind of always helped. helps. Always of helps, course, you yeah. know. So the uh so some of those early, you know, um early Twisted Sister records, you know, uh um early A C D C records. Did you see that Twisted Sister documentary? It, it was great. It's Pretty good. It was great. It's awesome. Yeah, it really was. <clears throat> yeah. You really get to know like how how much of a hard working band they were before they even got any like oh, national big, success. Big time. Dude, absolutely. Worked their asses off for like what seven years before anything happened. Yeah. And and I don't know. Have you you guys seen Twisted Sister live? I haven't. I haven't. Like D. Snyder is without a doubt one of the greatest frontmen yeah. ever. Yeah, I believe it. To this day, that's he's just great. unbelievable. I met him once. That's about it. He was right. cool. He's a character. Yeah, yeah. He was super nice. He was chill. Brought, brought his kid to Warp Tour. In, right. in, that's cool. Uh, in, New, in New Jersey or New York, I think. He, uh, girl, his uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember him saying a story. I think. Uh, not to name drop another podcast, I think it was on Jamie Jaster's uh, podcast. His okay. podcast is great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Talking about how he he would take his you know his daughter to you know to all these cool shows. Yeah, she'd sure. like a band, and he'd like send his email. Hey, you know, any chance we can? Hey, uh, it's me, D. Snyder. Hey, have you ever heard bitch. of Twisted? I'm in this band called Twisted Sister. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously not ACDC, but a band like Twisted Sister, like a kind of New England, New York, American rock band. What was it like living in Australia? I mean, band, it's hard for bands to get over there, right? So. Were yeah. you able to see a lot of live music? Um, the first band I saw was 87, was Bon Jovi. Nice. Yeah, so that was Metallica actually come out there, played, uh, but that was a little bit later. Um, Iron Maiden had been there before that uh, on the Power Slade tour, which nice. I didn't get to go. Awesome. I was too young. My my mum wouldn't let me go. <laughs> and Twisted Sister on the Stay Hungry tour. So mm. once uh, once Stay Hungry come out and, you know, uh, and I Want to Rock and We're Not Going to Take It, it was massive. They were oh, yeah. a massive band over there. Yeah. Awesome. So, That's so cool, man. Um yeah, I too have been in that situation where I was too young to go to a show. I mean, like when like the Guns Metallica tour happened. Right, yeah. When Aqua was, like, when Aqua was touring. Um, yeah, when Aqua came through Orange County, California. <laughs> when he was in his mid-20s, he was too young to go. Exactly. And my mom said, uh-uh, you can't go see Aqua. I don't like you listening to that Finnish devil music. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> That's cool. But, <clears throat> so, uh, but I've been like ACDC getting, you know, like an early band you got into. At that point, were they back in australia or were they still like uk based that was still uk based yeah yeah because they kind of got they started in australia but then moved to the uk okay for a long time but they're still known as obviously an aussie band but were yeah. they like the heroes of australia i mean was it like household their acdc basically yeah yeah, yeah. everyone I mean, loves they're, acdc they're, they're surely the biggest band to come out of australia yeah absolutely you think. know i mean yeah i would say without a, a lot of big i mean there's a lot of great bands from like midnight oil living end you know yeah. natalie and brulia oh nothing's fine i'm torn yeah there you go yeah. i love that song oh yeah, yeah. 
Uh, what's one? Uh, Powderfinger? Funny, funny Powderfinger. Yeah. Funny you dropped uh, Midnight Oil because I've just kind of got into a, a whole Midnight Oil vibe, which to me is, you know, probably everyone won't understand who they are, but to me it's really kind of punky, edgy, oh, oh, political Midnight music. Great. I don't know. Band. What would be a record for me or some listeners you, to check uh, out? Diesel and Dust or Blue Sky Mining. I'd even go beforehand. There's one called 10 to 1. Yeah. Just okay. uh, unbelievable. As, it, 10 as in the letter, the number 10, mm-hmm. the number 9, 8, 7, you know, so... Uh, Ten to one. Oh, ten really? One. That's yeah. the that's the record title. That's the that's the title. It's just all the the letters. Oh, ten, back, nine, eight, seven, the, six, the numbers five, backwards. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Great right, right. uh, You would know. Um, so I brought Diesel and Dust because that's probably their biggest record, at least in America. It was. Outs- outside of Australia, Beds was, are yeah. burning. That song. How can we dance when our earth keeps turning? I love that. You know that song? Mm. That sounds How like an eighties new wave song. Beds are I just hear I can hear a keytar under that. There's that sounds no, like a flock of seagulls. There's there. some keys in there, but dude, Minnow is badass. I'm into it. I'm gonna check it out. They're awesome. Blue Sky Mind's great record. Absolutely. Yeah, and their singer uh, Peter Peter Garrett Peter Garrett, big big uh, politics guy. He's he's in politics now. Yeah, as far he's as always like, ran for office and like yeah. held office positions and and they just did a reunion tour like last year, I think. Yeah, they yeah. did a bunch of shows in the states and I almost got to go. Speaking of politics, so Twist's sister, they were heavily involved in uh, what was the court thing they were involved with the parental advisory stuff. Yeah, the PMRC. Yeah, you know, which was um, you yeah, know, that did, was um, it was a uh, uh, Tipper Gore. Absolutely, right. that up, yeah. yeah. John Denver was a part of it, right? Frank Zappa, Frank, Frank Zappa, that's right. Yeah, it's cool seeing D. Snyder because you know, Twisted Sister. Obviously, they, they uh, a very interesting visual. Yeah. They were sort of defiant rock and roll, and yeah. it was cool to see that because you know, I think it was the first taste for a lot of people to see like, oh, some rock stars are pretty smart, pretty eloquent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, care well, about. Well, he's stuff. also uh, forever. He's he's never like he's always been sober. Exactly. Oh, he, he never he was never a big drug guy. Ever. Okay, cool. Never even drank. I think. No, I think that was his thing. He, he, you know, I think they probably thought, oh, we got a winner here. You know, look at this guy. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, he shaves his teeth down into a, you know, into a point <laughs> at that stage, and then they get a really articulate, really, really intelligent, yeah. you know, non-drinker, non-drug user, family man. Yep. You know, so uh, when he showed up to court, like in like a denim vest, and his, his hair was kind of uh, he didn't have makeup on or anything, but. He was like kind of in a ponytail, but still sticking out in the front. Yeah. And then John Denver's there, like in a suit and stuff. But yeah, I think they took him by surprise. He's a big fixture in the Stern world too, which I forgot. That's something you and I Love connected on too. Absolutely, yeah. Stern yeah. guy. We're kind of jumping all around here. Let me try to let me let's, let's wrangle ourselves back I, in. <laughs> I blame me. Um, so Twisted Sister, ACDC, you're getting into rock music. Getting into rock music. So are your you have a, like your friends are doing it too, or you play guitar a little bit? Were you playing guitar at all? I, I started. I probably started guitar around about fourteen, fifteen. You know, okay. something like that. Just, um, you know, kind of started by learning Natalie Imbruglia's debut record. Yeah, that's right. I don't even know whether she was born back then. <laughs> that was quite a while ago. She's only 40, I think. <laughs> or 41 right now. Is she? Yeah. I, I did meet her once, again, to jump. I, I met her once with uh, at, a, at an industry oh, thing. Her and Daniel Johns with Silverchair. And, um, yeah. Cool. Oh, I forgot about Silverchair. Yeah. Cool. Great and friend, yeah. uh, it was it was pre, pre-iPhone, so um, I actually had a camera with me for whatever reason mm-hmm. so I went up and I think he thought I was going to get him get a photo with him and I kind of gave the camera to him and said hey can you uh, <laughs> hey man Frog Stomp's cool you, and all you yeah. Get a, yeah get us a photo yeah so, I love uh, your music but uh, you know, she's better looking than you well how yeah. yeah I mean how can I say this um, she's a very beautiful lady she's gorgeous yeah. Yeah. yeah was she nice was she cool she was great absolutely awesome. she was super cool let's just go ahead and commit to this being sort of a tangent city it's going to be tangent city I, right? I was playing a show uh, this week and this lady's like, first of all, I play for a guy named Rodney Atkins. Now, I don't look anything like Rodney Atkins. I don't look like anything like a guy that would be playing country music. And yet, here we are. Right. This lady who's coming to our show, I'm walking through the bar or whatever, the, the bar part of the club we were at to go outside or something. Hey, are you Rodney Atkins? Oh, hey, no. <laughs> uh, do you know Rodney Atkins? Yeah, I'm his guitar player. Is he crazy? That's her first question. Yeah, like- is he crazy? Uh, no, he's super sweet, super great. You know Brad Paisley? Uh, yeah. Is he crazy? I was like, okay, I see. Okay, see what's your going. thing is. You want to know. You want to. You're kind of a star fucking celebrity whore, yeah. and you want to know if all the people I know are crazy. Yeah. Why don't you fuck oh, off? God. <laughs> now, having said that, so what's your guy? Is he crazy? <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nally Brilia, really, she crazy. <laughs> um. Anyway, Bon Scott. Ooh, Bon, bon Scott, Scott was kind of crazy. Mm. Oh, speaking of that, Bon Scott or Brian Johnson? Um. Bon Scott. Okay. You know, but OG. Brian Johnson, absolutely. You know, it's the whole, uh, you know, Cliff, Jason, true. Rob story right it's over very again. very true, yeah. You know? That's a good comparison because, I mean, two icons in two huge, massive, legendary bands yep. lose an integral part of their their team. Well, and Bon Scott was Highway to Hell, right? 
Uh, Highway to so Hell, it's yeah. similar to Puppets and Justice. You got Highway to Hell, Bon Scott, and then like one year later, you got Back in Black, Brian Johnson. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly. You're yeah. the new singer. You kind of sing in a similar fashion, yeah. But you're not Bon Scott, and you go on to sing on one of the best-selling records of all time. They they struck lightning twice for sure. Oh man. That record is, I mean, it's sold an unbelievable amount of albums. So and what, it's so good. Uh, oh, and it's, and it's still good. Yeah. Oh, and oh, Mutt, still sounds Mutt Lang, you know. There's times where, like, I'll, I'll put that record on in my studio, and, I mean, just the snare sound alone still makes me just, like, step back and be like, how... Th- this still sounds relevant. Yeah. Like yeah. the production of it. Absolutely. The guitar tones sound great. They never really adapted with, like, sounds that were cool in that era like they that, don't have a keyboard heavy record no no, no. I don't think they have any, they might, there might be some the way like Rush did or something, or something right you know? yeah. but like they never really went they did their own thing man they were like a punk band they're like fuck you we're gonna do whatever we want Yeah. so where does Metallica f- fall in for you is that around um, there yeah Metallica kind of come uh, you know I kind of got into the, the, the Motley Crue and uh, even the Bon Jovi's and all that kind of stuff um, you know, whatever. I was kind of grasping as a kid anything with a guitar, kind of leading me that way. And then, yeah. um, and then I fell into Metallica around uh, Master of Puppets. You know, borrowing my brother's, um, we were looking for for some kind of scary music, so we kind of grabbed uh, Master of Puppets one day and, you know, put the needle on one song, and then on the next song, and every song I'm realizing, holy fuck, this is unbelievable. This is scary. <laughs> you know, well, it, it wasn't scary. It was just like, like, right. um, you know, it was kind of golden. Yeah, you know? I kind of seen the light, mm. and um, from them it was. Uh, it was Metallica. Full speed ahead. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, sure. yeah. That is a record. I mean, to come in on that record, I mean, it's obviously their most classic album. Um, but, I mean, to hear those songs for the first time, you know, I remember hearing that. I mean, when I was in probably seventh grade for the first time, like, yeah. whoa. Like, you know, you like, I've often talked about when I first heard one for the first time. That was my, my intro to Metallica. And it was right, like, yeah. I'd heard Bon Jovi and Poison. That stuff was all over the radio and all over MTV. And then I heard Metallica and I was like, this is like nothing I've ever heard before in my yeah. life. Puppets is the one that I feel, it's not even my favorite, but it's the one I feel the easiest calling a masterpiece. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Lightning's got escape, you know, like there's some things with, you know, Don't Tread on Me kind of keeps the Black Album from being perfect, but yeah. Puppets, there's not really a moment like that. Puppets is faultless from yeah. start to finish. It, it really is. I think that, I mean, that and Justice, I think to me are, are flawless. And Justice has some... Uh... I love Injustice. You know? I do too. I, I think we we talked a little bit. It's it's mm-hmm. equal my second favorite Metallica record. Me too. But there yeah. are some faults. Yeah, there are I some agree. Good faults in there. Yeah. I agree. So did you get to see them? On, did they come over there with Ozzy? Or I'm trying to remember when they wanted to come over there. For no, the they first come time. over for uh, Injustice. Okay. Um, and they just played Sydney and Melbourne. So okay. I was too young. I didn't go down there. Um, kind of. It's I've actually missed some great Metallica shows along the way, which have really kind of bugged me still to this day. Yeah, really same. bugged me. Yeah, yeah. me too. So um, I missed the one, the last uh, maybe, I think it was the last time they played here when Lemmy came out on stage and played with them. Yeah, in Nashville. Yeah, really. And I was on tour. I couldn't couldn't go. Couldn't do, yeah, I missed yeah. the basement show where they played at yeah, Grimey's. Same. Like for, I, first I, like, time, I had an invitation to it. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. had 185 people. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Loser. I know. Totally. See you guys. <laughs> I'm out. You're, you're the co-host now. What were you about to say? Um, uh, I don't know. You just, were saying the first time. I don't know if you were going to say the first time you saw him. No, actually, first time I saw him, I got a bit of a bad story as well. You know, like uh, I used to get a record, or I used to get a couple of records every Friday. They played, um, they played Brisbane on a Saturday, so every Friday I'd go in there and and uh, I had a record store, and they'd have all these records behind the counter for me. You know, just whatever. You know, Nirvana would come in and you know release a record, and they'd have it behind the counter, or yeah. Alice in Chains, or or you know whoever. So. Um, I, I didn't go in. It was one of the only Fridays I didn't go in because I was working late. So uh, um, I went in on the Saturday. Actually, they played Friday night. That's what they did. And um, they were like, man, we had like um, snake pit tickets for you. Oh, you know? no. But I already had tickets to the show, but they had uh, like snake pit tickets to give away. You know, that's been... And wow. you were so consistent every Friday. I thought, oh, well, let's give them to him. I'll like- give them to Darren when he comes in and he just never showed up. Wow. You know? Oh, and, man. Uh, so there's one of, one of those things, you know. And, and that's also back then when it's like, well, give them a call. And if you're not home, it just rings and rings and rings. And yeah. that's it. So True. That's one of those, one of those bad Metallica stories. But um, yeah, so I saw them on the Black Record. Mm. That, was, uh, that was when they come out there. I guess maybe 92 or something like that. So, cool. I mean, still hell of a yeah. tour. I mean, they're, you know, at, then, at that point, I mean, the newest stuff they're playing is from the Black Album. So they're still first four record heavy, too. It, it was amazing. The show was amazing. Uh, it, uh, Do you remember who supported them? Kaisk. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Caius was? Yeah, Caius was support, supporting him. Yeah. That's awesome. So, unbelievable wow. show. Yeah, yeah, cool. And um, and Jason had cut his hair recently, yeah. you know, so he come out. He'd actually grown out a little bit, so he had kind of like What the this... fuck, you bogan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He knows a bunch of I'm these. I'm scoring Aussie points today, man. Oh, man, maybe. We'll, we'll have to give you a grade at the end. Okay. We'll have to have Darren grade you. Fair enough. You dingo. You wallaby. <laughs> G'day, you wallaby. <laughs> Yeah, people forget that Jason actually cut his hair first. Yeah. I can't remember what happened. Did, like, did he have an incident Pretty where he really. had... Uh, well, he, had, he cut it into a mohawk first. He did, I remember that. Yeah, he yeah. did the skrillex well, he, thing. He did, and well, then he, he did the shave sides thing, which is why I did that in high right, school. Okay. Um, and that was cool, especially when he did his windmill. And then uh, then it just got short. But you yeah. can see videos of that time where yeah. he's got super short hair, like, yeah. like load era short hair. A couple years before that, I mean... Yeah, three years before that record came out. I don't know if I'm confusing him in a moment of insanity with Michael Jackson, who I know burned his hair on the Pepsi commercial. Did Jason cut his hair because he burned it? He like burned I, his hair and had to cut it? I've never I heard that before. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah. I, I've That may have just made that up, pulled that out maybe. of my ass. Well, please don't write in about it. it has got no, it has no relevance regards to music or what, but it was a shock. Right. I can remember thinking, man, what, what is this? Especially on that show when he came out because... At first, I think he cut it as a mohawk, so it kind of looked cool. But when he when he was there, it was this big buffont kind of thing, and <laughs> I was like, "Man, that's I don't know." It didn't bother me at all, other than it looked just looked funny when he tried to headbang. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. then it's but just, that's when you know it's a real headbang, man. Yeah. Because it, it's easy to headbang when like you know when you, you got, got lots of hair. You yeah. got lots of hair. It's cool, yeah. man. It's nice, you, fellas. You get, you get the whole yeah. effect, you know. But yeah. headbanging with no hair is no joke. Yeah, you got to really commit to it. Like the dude's really headbanging. Yeah. You can kind of get away with a half-assed version of it with long hair because your hair is just moving around. You know? <laughs> the hair does much of the, the, the it's effect. It's most of the work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Gravity really does does the work. Yeah. So keep moving us along in your world. Um, so you're, you're seeing them on the Black Album Tour in the early 90s. When did you start working in the music industry? I, I, when I left Australia, which was 90, 97, beginning of 97. For Sweden? For Now actually for the UK. Okay. So that was a, that was a pretty... I kind of landed in... Um, Landed in London, had had no one or no reason to go over there, so landed in London for to get into music, and uh, walking through the uh, through the gate, um, picked up Kerrang. It was a Wednesday, and just flicked it through, and there was a, um, a venue called Rock City, yeah, uh, which is in Nottingham, and uh, I was like, oh man, like tonight this is playing, and oh tomorrow night's that's playing, and, oh that's playing. I'm like, fuck, I got no reason to be in London. Jumped on a on a bus and went up to Nottingham, and and the rest is. It's kind of history. Walked walked in with my backpack into the uh, into the back of the club, and like a naive young kid was like, "Hey, can I get a job?" And they were like, "No," you know. <laughs> they were they were loading in Marilyn Manson that yeah. night. They were like, "No." On the Antichrist Superstar tour. On the Antichrist Superstar. Holy yeah. shit! Wow. And it's like a it's a real club. It's like a I think it's probably eighteen hundred or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a real sticky floor. Real the good ones. Real, yeah. Great one, yeah. especially back then. Wow, and uh, and they said no, and sent me packing, and and they saw me. I, I got a scalp ticket, and the uh, head of security who did all the load ins uh, saw me that night, and he goes, "You're that kid," and I was like, "Yeah, I'm the one from earlier today," and he was like, "Come with me," and um, took me to the manager and said, "Give him a job," and from that day, I was, no I was working wow. at that venue, and I'd load in the bands and so work. What was it? The they bar. kind of admired your tenacity. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I tell people this all the time, and I'm, I'm, you can speak of this too, because doing what you do, you get credentials for lots of... You get to be in a lot of cool places. Yep. It is amazing how much you can get into places like that if you just look confident enough to belong there. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Well, first of all, you have to kind of look like us, which maybe or maybe not is a compliment. You know let's what I mean? Let's just go with it that it is. Like, I'm on like year 20 of people where in a fucking gas station saying, you're in a band, right? And the older I get, yeah. the more I'm like... I'm not sure that's good anymore. <laughs> I get it all the time. When I was 22, that was I've, I've, that, that was like a fucking badge of honor. Now I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm a Especially dad. Especially on yeah. flights, too. Are you, are you in a band? You are know, you famous? You know, my cousin's a lawyer. You should talk to him. So they give you the job, and what are the first few things, like what's the first few months of that gig like? Were you, you? just kind of like a stagehand at first, like pushing cases? Or? Yeah, pushing cases, loading in. It, it yeah. um you know, it just kind of, I was working behind the bar whenever that wasn't on. So I literally ended up being there 24-7. Mm. Yeah. So I would do the beer. I ended up taking all the beer deliveries, um, loading it every single band. So, man, every band played there. Every band from, um, um, you know, the back then it was like the Machine Heads and the um, and the Coal Chambers and the 
all this kind of stuff. Plus the UFOs, you know, Shanker was back with UFO yeah, then, wow. so I got to, you know, got to hang with him. And I was also a little bit in control of dealing with the bands. And you were know, you doing control. like hospitality? Um, kind of a little bit, yeah. 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 So if they need drinks or beers or if if they're not completely satisfied, it's like you know, go and check on them. And um, right, yeah. you know, did David Bowie there? David oh, Bowie wow. played cool. there when he headlined the the Phoenix. So he did a warm up show there the night before. That's cool. So, I love when big artists and bands do warm up shows in clubs, dude. It's so cool. Yeah, we're talking about the Metallica one at the basement. I mean, it's Prince would often do that after shows. I, I remember playing South by, and the big buzz was that Prince was playing this little three hundred seat club. And like, it was literally an electric feeling on Sixth Street as the word made its way. Yeah, that Prince is. If you can just figure out how to get in there, you know, everyone in South by kind of knows someone. Everyone's right. like kind of hitting up whatever their bullshit you know, like contacts yeah. are. Um, so did you have the wherewithal at that age? You're brushing up against Marilyn Manson, David fucking Bowie. Hmm. Did you have the wherewithal to like? Because some. I, what I find in my touring is that most people who do that gig, they know what's up. They know how to be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people don't, but they don't last long, right? That doesn't last. You no. can't be a, a Gurmy. Oh, no. no. A Gurmy Gurmerson. No, I mean, even when I was working for Kings, I mean, there was there was local hands that, I mean, they're, they're big fans, and they let you know right away, and I immediately have to be like, you know, hit up our stage manager and be like, yo, dude, this guy's, he's not really working. He's just asking me for pics. Oh, and no, this no, no, that. no. And it's like, then, you know, then the local the local guys will come over and be like, hey, Ted or whatever, like, leave him alone, you know? What mm. would be a band that was the most tempting for you to do that? Do you, did you have anyone come through that you were like, shit? Um, Aqua, probably. Pro yeah. Other Aqua, than Aqua. Of course. Of course. <laughs> other Dan than Aqua. Danny Minogue. Danny Minogue. I don't know whether you know who Danny Minogue is. I don't. Is that Kylie's brother? Kylie's younger sister. Younger sister. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. The right. better looking sister. Really? Yeah. Better looking than Kylie? Yeah. In the day. Yeah. In the day. <laughs> <laughs> what about... Local motion era Kylie. Um, well, that was another that's, Aussie. That's OG Kylie stage. OG. Man. Oh, yeah. That's right at the beginning. That's like late 80s. That was like what, late 80s. Yeah? Well, I think so. Maybe yeah. even before. Local motion, yeah. I don't know. I'm just enjoying this. <laughs> I don't know much Two about it. Two old dudes talking. Hey, man. Um, I did, you Is know there what? a band that, that you there almost was, There was lost a lot it? of cool shit. There was a lot of cool shit. Um, I kind of had it down pat I, I, from the start. You know, to One, you got to do your job. No matter what, you got to right. do your job. Right, and yeah. uh, that comes above everything else and um like you said otherwise you don't last and yeah. uh but there was some really cool shit yeah lemmy for instance mm. you know i'm just like this little kid from australia and you know and and lemmy is there you wow. know hanging out with lemmy so it's crazy mm. yeah, it's one thing when you're when you're a local hand or stage local stage manager or whatever production manager you know to you know if you run into him backstage other show like hey great job tonight mm. yeah yeah easy that's fine yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. No. But it's when you like overstep those boundaries and like, you know, like remember when you're in the Beatles kind of vibe? Well, and, and th just think about like when you meet a Gurmy fan or when you meet someone cool. Look, this just happened to us last night. One of the local stagehands just last night, we were in Daytona Beach, Florida. And he came up and he was like, hey, this one you guys know, you were great. I'm a huge fan. Thank you. And he shook our hands and left. The combo after he left was like, that was a cool dude. Yeah. 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 Like, it's you easy. know what I mean? It's Instead easy. of someone walking away and the band's going, yeesh. Lord, I thought yeah. they'd stop talking. You know, like you want the story of you to be cool, what in, in right, whatever yeah. you do. So, Absolutely. Did you always want to move up at that club, or were you always kind of looking ahead to how to how can you move through that? I, I think it was kind of just um, I was kind of rolling with it. To be yeah. honest with you, I was a kid. I had no no strings attached. How and, old uh, were you when you went there? Twenty three. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. What a what yeah. a fun time to be twenty three. Your parents are probably like, oh god, Darren. Well, I, I was to go for two years, but I remember saying to my mum, you know, I'm not coming back. Yeah. She was like, oh, don't say those but things. But after two years, it probably, you, you know, it seemed like you were pretty well, well established in Nottingham, had a, had a well, job full time. Yeah. Well, then I moved down to London and um, did a similar thing down there. And then it got into the record companies and um, and it just kind of snowballed from from that, you know. You still haven't gone home. Your mom's still <laughs> waiting for you to come home. It's <laughs> that two waiting. years turned into a long still time. Waiting. Yeah. She's like, it's gotta be a little Darren, mate, it's been over two years. <laughs> mate, come on home. So did you transition from like a local club thing into a into a record label? Uh kind of went from a local club into a um into another bar and then started contacting the record labels and saying, Hey, we've got this bar, it's a rock bar, we do things, why don't we do album launches, release mm. parties, why don't we do after shows? Oh, cool. All that kind of stuff. So so then change this venue into doing those kind of things and you know a lot of bands would come through there and uh, we'd do some really cool That's shit. That's cool. So you so you were basically responsible for this what was this club called? It was called the Intrepid Fox. The Intrepid Fox. Yeah. That ass. yeah. Ooh, so damn. it was a it was a, a bonafide rock bar yeah. before I joined. You know, it was cool. uh, it was 
it was like um you know a lot of a lot of heritage it was right yeah. just down the road from the original marquee you know in in water street in london and yeah so in the day, like Guns N' Roses would drink there and yeah. all, shit. You know, the Sex Pistols were there back in the day and all this kind of How shit. How easy was it? So you're calling a record label, you're calling Alice in Chains record label to say, hey, you guys are going to put out self-titled or whatever. Uh, we want you to come to our, do a CD release at our thing. How easy was it to get through to people? Like, Do you have to have a quick elevator speech? Um, to be honest, it was super easy. Like, you know? what did you say? Like, hey, I need... Do, do you start by saying, hey, I'm Darren, I work for this club, I'm interested in a certain kind of concert here, who can I speak to? Or did you kind of know who to get to? Well, it was it was very much a bar that everyone would go to anyway. So it was, it know, was, so a, it was a well-known place. It was a well-known place. Like a CBGB's or something. Exactly. It's kind of like that of London. So you know, mm-hmm. all the all the Kerrang riders were all going in there, all the Metal Hammer riders were all yeah. there. So so we kind of got a, a rapport, you know, so we knew each other there. Right. And, and then the record labels would come in and then... Um, and then just kind of go from there. Whether it was over the bar, I can't exactly remember how. Whether it was over the bar or, you know, hey, the Haunted's got a record coming out, so, you know, hey, why don't we do this? Or, you know, Roadrunner. Roadrunner was a great one, which would always send me me records, and right, posters, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, you've got to probably have a pretty hefty record collection if you've hung on to this stuff over the years. It's um, it's it's a little bit too big. Really? Yeah. As far as vinyl goes, how many how many do you have? You know, Ooh. vinyl vinyl kind of I went through the CD stage as well. So vinyl, I probably got. Um, thousand, twelve hundred, something. That's, like that. that's a lot of vinyl. That's twice as many as me. I feel like yeah. mine's a good sized collection, and I'm at like four fifty or something. And I, and I think the um, the um, CDs was probably six or seven thousand. You know, wow. oh, shit. I, I, I went through <laughs> like I had a I had a man cave at the house yeah. when when I was married for a long time, um, but when we got separated, um, I had to box them all up and put them all in storage and that's a lot of fucking CDs yeah that's man. a lot of a lot of transport it, it, it's no joke I mean you put enough CDs in a box it fucker gets heavy exactly. I was gonna ask you how much of you being like just a pure music lover affected your success at that job talking to the Kerrang writers or to record labels I mean you being an actual fan probably had a lot to do with your charisma talking to these people yeah, I would I, imagine I, I think so yeah you're kind of hitting them you know I know because most of those guys, you know, like the Kerrang riders or the Metal Hammer riders, or you know, now in Sweden, they're, they're all fans. They they really are, you right? Know? And um, I think the industry gets a little bit of a bad rap sometimes, like it's just run by lawyers or, or you know, yes, cynical. Yeah, you know what? But there's a lot of really good people and a lot of music fans that are you know that are busting their ass to to do it. So um, yeah, you kind of you kind of hit it, hit a hit a level head talking about bands yeah. and, uh, and music you're into and. Uh, you know, when you get appreciation for, you know, the guy you're talking to could be, uh, you know, mightn't like Metallica, but, you know, he'll fucking love Morrissey or he'll love The Cure or something right, like yeah. that. So you can hit on different different levels too. That's cool. Yeah. That's so, so awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, always, I always found a way to relate to people in high... Even in my high school, it was still tribal with music. Yeah. Whether it was like the Nine Inch Nails corn kids or like hip-hop kids or metalheads or pop people life's a lot easier to coast through if you like a lot of different kinds of music. Yeah. yeah. But it, but it's that way when you're growing up in school, it's like your taste in music... It's a big deal. ...chooses your group of friends. Yeah. It, you it, know? Yeah, and it defines you to yeah. a certain yeah. degree. Like, sure. I was sway into metal when I got in junior high, and I found all the dudes in Metallica and Anthrax just shirts and, you know, Testament shirts and stuff, and I'm like, those are my dudes right there. I'm going to hang out with them. But then when I got a little older, like maybe mid-high school, I started getting into more like punk rock and ska and reggae and hip-hop and all that stuff the group of friends just expanded in my experience you know it's and when you, I, yeah, I think that's how it should be it was when you, know? you finally got the aqua onesie that exactly. you found your people yeah it's, if yeah. I recall you tell me a basic, that story it's, it's more of a romper <laughs> it's an aqua romper yeah. so, so this is fascinating so keep keep going so how do you parlay that into actually working for labels just because you knew them you started to develop relationships with these people it, well actually this label um, actually this is when I went back for the first time to Australia um and I couldn't. Um, Zach Wild, Black Label Society. Well, it was pre Black Label had just released a um, a, a record. I was just about to insert a "Mom, I'm coming home" joke. You mentioned <laughs> Zach Wild, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it would have worked perfectly. That was perfect. Dang it, I was late on that one. <laughs> and uh, I got fed up with not being able to find this record. I just could not find it anywhere. It was the uh, the Book of Shadows, and I kind of, um, which is a phenomenal record, you know, Zach Wild, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and then so I reached out, you know, went back there and uh, come back to England and found who was the record label and got in contact and said, guys, you're doing a shit job, you know, like, where is this record? And um, and was their response, thank you for this valuable 
constructive criticism. <laughs> um, no. Yeah. No. That, that was probably the, uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Hang up. Totally. Thanks, kid. <laughs> yeah. But it kind of evolved from that. I was writing for some fanzines and that, and I was started to interview some of their bands. And then, um, and then it's kind of, to be honest, I just made a job for myself. Mm. So uh, yeah. I, I kind of forced my way in, way in there and, and made a job. And, and, and not that I condone working for free at all. You know, I don't think, to this day, I don't think anyone should sometimes work for to. free. But sometimes you have to. Yeah. And that's, that's what I did at the start. At least to get a body of work going. Yeah. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So I kind of forced myself in there and, uh, and, and said, you know what, I'll come in and I'll help you with some stuff. And, uh, and then after two or three months, I was like, fuck, man, like, we got to put you on. So, uh, so they finally just said, okay. Well, they were, first, they were maybe hesitant, and then they finally were like, all right. I was like an intern. First, yeah. they said you can come on and be an intern, and then, uh, and then it become pretty, pretty obvious that, um, that it's I, almost like it's almost like what you did with the club initially. Like you kind of just like force your way in there. But see, I, exactly. I, I love this, and as yeah. we start yeah. to talk about all the really cool shit you've been doing, you've been able to do. I love hearing that it started that way because right. I think so many people, even if they're talented sort of wait around for something to happen to them. Yeah. And I, you know, not to sound like a cynic or something, but I just don't think that's what happens, man. It, it doesn't. You I think some to... people get lucky, but <clears throat> yeah, you got to kind of make it. You have to work hard at it to yeah. get to where you want to be, you know, I'm not really happen, a, you know. yeah, I'm not really a big believer in luck either. Yeah. Yeah. Opportunities come and you know, you got to take them. You got to have the right. balls to take them and right. you got to see when they're there and you got to take them. And then people will say, well, you're so lucky. And I was like, well, not really. I kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know. I, I feel the same way. I, I don't like giving credit to luck where th- really it's hard work that did it. Exactly. My, mm-hmm. my kid just the other day was talking all about how much she loves Santa Claus because he brings her so many presents. And I was, my daughter's four. And I said, hey, I said it in a very cool way, but I said, hey, baby, mommy and daddy get you those gifts. Mommy and daddy work real hard. Santa Claus is just a story. Because I don't want that motherfucker getting credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean it. I don't want that. <laughs> she needs to know that mommy and daddy love her, not some made up. Motherfucker, she'll learn it eventually. Well, Let her have. She's going to learn it now from Papa Bear, <laughs> <laughs> Papa Claus. No, no judgment to anyone who does Santa Claus with their kids. Nothing like that. That's just for my family. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm very much aligned with that. I believe in hard work being rewarded. Yeah, you know? for sure. I mean, there's been plenty of like uh, jobs I've gotten or you know playing gigs and stuff where when it happens, people are like, "Man, you're so lucky. You just got all the, you've gotten all these gigs over the years." And I'm like. But I just sit on my ass. Yeah, you're and super just, talented, dude. Like I worked, worked hard. my ass. I've been touring since I was 18 years old. Yeah. Like, By the way, am I yelling because I'm wearing these headphones? Am what? I talking super loud? No, you're, you, know, you sound no, you're great. Good. You're okay, good. cool. Just wanted to make sure. Stop yelling at us, jeez. So, what point of you? So you, that you're basically like an intern. You've you've, you've got to prove your value there. At what point do they finally say, "Hey, dude, Darren's really kicking ass for us. We need to really figure out how to compensate him and get him on board." Um, to the to the point when they realize the girl that i was interning for she wasn't doing anything but her nails so they basically uh, you know they basically they gave you her gig well actually one of the one of the more senior guys said hey can you come and come and like work for me we'll put you on we'll put you on the payroll and and be my assistant so to speak and which yeah. label was this uh that was spitfire at the time spitfire yeah. That label, yeah yeah which which was great so uh so i basically walked in and that was the the early zach day so that's where i yeah. started working with crowbar with zach wild uh with dio um, is Crowbar yeah. the band that has the album cover similar to Hardwired? Yes, yeah, it looks like Hardwired. Yeah, yeah. okay, yep. from like '97 maybe. Right, yeah. 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 What with Dio? Dio, yeah. holy shit! Really? Yeah. That's cool. You got any good stories about Dio? You've got a million great stories. Well, about here we Dio. go. Well, let's it's, pick. Let's pick just only maybe five hundred thousand. Yeah, about, let's just tell us half of them. Look, Dio is one of the nicest guys you will ever meet. Oh, you know, guy, yeah. absolutely genuine guy. Um, um. Yeah, I can't say a bad thing about him. Yeah. I, I strongly remember he always remembered people's names too. He'd, he'd, that is a hallmark of yeah. um, successful people. Yeah, they they remember names. They make you feel. They look you in the eye. Right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and and he was phenomenal every show. There was one show that um, we were doing a big feature for for Kerrang, and he was so sick, you know, and um, you know, just on kind of yeah, just really sick with the flu. Right. So we cancelled the. Um, Cancel the, the the interview that we're going to do, and then Dio just come out and done. He played the Astoria, which was a, a pretty cool venue in London. Yeah, and he just come out and tore it up at the Astoria, and and I was standing with the Crane guys, and they were just like, 
dude, that was bullshit. He wasn't sick at all, you mm. know, but he was dead sad. Just, he was, yeah. He was so sick. You just and wouldn't he just, have known it from the show. Just wouldn't have known it. He just delivered. He just come out and gave 120%. Oh, he probably yeah. just needed a, a, every minute of the day to rest his voice until that moment. It, exactly. I'm sure the second he got off stage, he was probably like, oh, I just hacking up the lung, it, you know? It, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Man, I've been dipping in some rainbow lately. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Those records are so good. The Richie Blackmore Dio. Yeah, uh, man. There's some cool stuff in there. I only got turned on to those records because of Metallica. Right. They did, okay, yeah. did the, the uh, Ronnie Rising compilation. They yeah. did the medley. Yeah. But uh, like Terra Woman, like that song is so good. There's yeah. so many cool, it's like metal with synths and it's like operatic vocal. It's so good. And he was, I mean, what a hell of a singer, man. Yeah. Well, well he's insane. one of the greatest. I one mean, of the greatest, yeah. Chris Dickinson, I mean, Dio's probably top five. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. So were those the notable artists that were on that label at the time? <laughs> um, you know what? There were so many. There was Alice Cooper. There was uh, Ted Nugent, you know, mm. and got to work pretty close with, with the D.O.s and the Zach Wilds and the Ted Nugent's. And uh, break and I know you were kind of doing a hodgepodge of a lot of stuff, but break down what an average, what were you doing for these bands? But for that, I was doing like all the all the promotions, all the press promotions. So if they had a new record out. Had a new record, making it get reviewed, yeah. uh, hunting out interviews for them, making sure they got the right interviews in the right places. And if you knew the Kerrang writers, you are you're, are you calling your buddies at Kerrang saying, yeah, hey, do you exactly. got a new record? I'll get you hooked up. Exactly. That's cool. That's yeah, awesome. So yeah, all your work before that is now paying off too. And now paying off. Absolutely. Great, also, also then back to the Rock City, I'd, I'd contact Rock City and say, hey, we got this record out. Let's do a club night there on a Friday night. Absolutely. So you have like a whole network of shit going on. So then on. there was, yeah. And then the network started to grow from there. We'd, we'd do some cool stuff. and um, That's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Doing all the marketing for them. And yeah, it was good. Good times. Yeah, so awesome. I bet. Wow. Yeah. That's so and then cool. there was lots of newer bands coming through, you know, like, um, I don't know, Dog Fashion Disco. I don't know whether you remember that band. Mm-hmm. I do. Um, but there was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot of cool, a lot of cool music. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Were there any people that were difficult to work with? Um, you know what? All the, all the known difficult ones, I actually, I, I can pretty much say I haven't had a bad experience, you know? Yeah. Ingve uh, Malmsteen is a, a known. I'll, I'll, he was fucking super cool to me. Oh, was he? You know? Darren. Yeah. We, we had some great experience. He, really? His Trans Am. Oh, hey, all right. Ferrari. Ferrari, Ferrari, Ferrari dude. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, I would get him to do some really cool shit. Like um, there was a, there's a street you probably know in London called Denmark Street, yeah, yeah, which sure. is all the guitar shops. Hmm. So we kind of organized it. Just with him, we didn't tell anyone. Uh, him and Kerrang or, or Metal Hammer, one of the two, and we, we had him busking there. So we literally busking. Had a, yeah, we had a little pig nose ant. Dave <laughs> busking, um, just sweet picking all day. And yeah, on Denmark Street, drove up, dropped him off. Out he goes, starts to start playing, and then everyone's like, "What the fuck is that?" Looking out of their shop windows and start rushing. And uh, you know, he <laughs> he would do cool shit like that. That is cool. You know? That's crazy. Yeah, Ingve. How about that? Hey, I man. like that, Mr. Malmstein. He had to give your label ten percent though of the busking, the busking money he made. Well, there you go. <laughs> that's right. That's how. You, that's how it works. <laughs> and I remember he used to sell um, the, the the women's under underwear uh, on a merch. Yeah, you know, a G string. He'd have it up. Yeah, buy an Ingve G string. I thought that you was. You know what? I will. Ingenu- I will ingenuous. pivot a little bit to what I think is very cool about him. He just really leaned into the rock star thing. That's one of the reasons oh, yeah. I resonate with Kiss so much. And I know you're a Kiss guy. Yep. Is like they. They wanted to be rock stars, and they weren't ashamed of it, mm-hmm. and they didn't think they were above it. And they were kind of like, if you don't want to be the best fucking stupidest rock star in the world, then get out of the way. Exactly. And Yngwie I'm kind making of G-strings. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to make G-strings and sell them. Of course I'm going to do that. My yeah. name right on them. <laughs> what, am I going to pretend that I'm over like fucking reading Voltaire? No, dude, I'm making G-strings for the <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Here's my question about Yngwie, though. Do ladies go to his shows? Um, it seems like a kind of dude-heavy show. I know, but the dudes would buy them for their ladies. Oh, not me. My wife loves I, my wife loves Slash. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I can't compete with that. That'd be weird. Like, hey, babe, here's an Ingve Malmsteen G-string. G-string. <laughs> my wife would go, ew. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Why is there another dude's name on these things? It, it was for the record, Unleash the Fury. So it's very fitting. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Right on. So, all right. That's why I'm wearing one right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're not wearing one. That, that's <laughs> They're the, silky smooth. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. The stitching, it gets a little annoying. The Yngwie stitching. But, right. Oh, his yeah, his signature nice, takes yeah. up the whole front plate of it. So. Yeah. <laughs> plate. <laughs> it's made of bronze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's weird. Mine's copper. It's got a Ferrari insignia on it. That's right, yeah. So where do you move from there? So are you, how long do you camp out there? So that I was there till 2007 and then moved... Um, that's when I moved across to Sweden. Okay. So, and you went to Sweden just to work for Warner? No, I went to Sweden to um, 
um, I was having my second kid. Mm. You know, so when we kind of got the news, we're having a, a second kid. Uh, Sweden is so good for, you know, for that. You know, and uh, we literally fantasize about about living over there. Man, it's <laughs> it's ridiculous, especially Sweden's for awesome, this yeah. kid. The education part of it, yeah, the education, healthcare, and the healthcare, and, and all that is unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Ours so, isn't too far behind, right? No, we're for a, no, we're really killing it these yeah, days. Killing you know? it in the education and the healthcare department. <laughs> Jesus. All right. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and by that stage, I was also writing for a lot of the guitar magazines in in the UK. Um, so um, and then I was working with a few bands. What um, would be some of the guitar magazines that were from the UK? I wonder if I would recognize any. Well, there's heaps. There's Guitarist, Total Guitar. You oh yeah. Know, um, okay. Guitar Techniques. There was Guitar and Bass. There was. Um, and are you writing more? In, are you writing? Guitar type shit, or are you writing more like rec- rec- like record reviews? Guitar or? type shit. Oh, really? O- only that. Yeah. No, oh, you were really? doing you were doing tab. Uh, no, no, as in features. Oh, oh, got it. Yeah, got it. Okay. features. Yeah. So features and taking taking some photos. I think I think I used to write press releases and uh, and I knew all the magazine guys, so they'd be like, "Hey, you ever wrote?" And I'm like, "Eh, not really." And uh, yeah, little fans in here and little fans in there, and they said, "Well, a couple of them said, well." You know, hey, give it a shot." And I had that kind of inside, you know, the the backstage kind of. Man, you're so lucky. <laughs> so lucky! Wow. I was about to say, man, you really have like done so much cool stuff in the behind the scenes of rock music. Like, this, is a lot, mm-hmm. this is something that like a lot of fans don't realize that goes on behind the scenes. They may know about the band's management and their label and stuff like that, um, but the 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 hard workers of that label uh, or that are writing for a zine or for a magazine, um, those are the important things that fans like us see at a certain point. And maybe when we're younger, we don't read who wrote the article. Mm. I, but, I, mean, I think it, even if you're like hip but casual, but if you're kind of a hip listener, you know that when Alice in Chains is a new record, their label, you, I think you just assume the label does everything. Yeah. Well, they got to promote it. And if they see a billboard or hear an interview or see a, a tiny desk concert, there's all sorts of people who basically facilitate that. And that's kind of you, you know? Yeah. 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 It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. So you're in Sweden, you're having your second kid, you're enjoying all the benefits of living in a, in a place that cares about education and healthcare. Yep. Uh, and you're writing for the fanzines. So we're writing for the by then it was magazines. Magazines. So writing okay, for gotcha. the magazines and a few of the artists that I was working with at, at you know at Spitfire, which also is this company called Eagle Rock. Um, they said, well, if you're leaving, why don't you come and work for us? So a couple of them put me on their payroll to be like their, you know, their consultant or their their European, you know, press coordinator kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I carried a couple of those bands across with me. So uh, so moving to Sweden, which was was kind of ideal. Moving there, I had a gig. You know, yeah. I know I know I had money coming in from from that and from Were you the traveling writing. a lot. Um, it, yeah, always traveling a fair bit. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, that's hard when you're having a kid. That's really hard. Yeah, to this day, it's really hard. Yeah, yeah. Don't do, don't you me? <laughs> yeah, I know. I got three dogs, guys. I get it. <laughs> you put your kid in crates too. Um, I actually have that. had people tell me that they they they're like I get it I have a dog that I love and it's like you're like Mm-mm. me and my wife will joke about that though like because some someone will like well, we don't ever compare like I'll make a joke like that but someone's like well no I get it sometimes dogs can be like a nightmare blah blah it's tough to get out of the house and I'm like yeah but I can put my dog in a crate or just leave him in the house and go to the bar right. for six hours right. and he'll be fine yeah you don't have to worry that your dog is going to be a psychopath in twenty years. That's right. No, that responsibility is not up to you to make them a exactly. good dog for See, society. My dog was a psychopath from age six months to a year. Right. And then we broke him with that, so now we're good. So the, the dog maybe doesn't miss you at three o'clock in the morning when you're in Nashville trying to get some sleep, you know, so they're FaceTiming. That's true. That's, that's well, a, if I'm in Nashville trying to get some sleep, I'm home with well, my dog. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. man. So moving on from there. <clears throat> yep. So moving on from there. And then, uh, so um, that. Ultimately, it resulted in me uh, working with Roadrunner over in Sweden, and then uh, and then Roadrunner. Ultimately, they was getting a bit businessy, but then got got bought by Warner. Mm-hmm. So then I was into the Warner feed, and then uh, and it went from there. So I went from working the Roadrunner bands, which is the Slipknots, which is the the Slashes uh, back yeah, then, the Rob Zombies, the bands, yeah. yeah, the Machine Heads, all that kind of stuff. Then coming into um, um, you know the Warner fold and, and working the. The, all the Warner Rock stuff as well, and that's kind of what you do now. Like that—that's where you've landed now. That's where I land now. I, I uh, also, I, you know what? You you have to work stuff outside of heavy music as well. So I'm working other stuff as well. You yeah, know? sure. Yeah, what's um, some of that stuff? I mean, you know what? I've worked Bruno Mars. Um, great. Yeah, um, Anderson Pack at the moment. You know, which oh, is. Oh yeah. uh, I just saw he has a new record. 
It's got a new record coming out 16th of November. Yeah. yeah. I I bought the... Uh, man, I bought the Lil Peep record today. All right. Okay, yeah. It's pretty fucking good. Hey, guys. Who's Anderson... What? Pack. Pack? I don't know who that is. Is it P-A-A-K? P-A-A-K. Yeah. He's like... You're uh, not doing your job if I don't know who he is. <laughs> That's what he's here. Hey, hey, my That's job him. is Sweden. Everyone knows who Anderson Pack is in Sweden. I'm sure they do. Yeah. Is he a Swedish artist? No, he's American. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. He's like a, you know, Dre... Dre produced his new record. Okay, cool. No, he's, he's one of those hip- R&B hip hop. Yeah, okay. More R&B. Okay. Yeah. So I'll check it out. Yeah. You've done your job. Well, so, like, so for example, you're here, you know, you hit us up because you're visiting, which, you know, you're welcome to hit me up anytime you come over here. Likewise in Sweden. What I'm waiting you, for that day. Waiting for you guys to get to Sweden. <sighs> what, are you, what are we doing tomorrow? There's Maybe a lot can... of things about this podcast and the relationships we've made through it that I wish had happened five years ago. Because five years ago until about a year ago, when I was touring with Kings of Leon, I was in Europe and the UK, I don't know how many times, 20 times? Yeah. In Sweden, in Norway, in England, whatever. I've been in London so, so many times. You know what I mean? Like, I wish this would have happened so long ago. Because yeah. now it's like I'm not touring as nearly as much as I used to. Right, yeah. But maybe next year, we'll see. Who knows? Who you know knows? what? And, and it is a small world, you know? So, um, you know, you meet you meet people in the industry in Sweden or in Norway or right, whatever. Right. And, uh you know, it's it's a good community too. You know? Yeah, for sure. The, the, the music industry. If Absolutely. you're willing to intern, I can probably get you a gig as a stagehand. Really? At the Intrepid uh, Forest. Int- Fox. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> the Intrepid Forest. So, for example, for, for what are you doing here this week? It, here I'm at a conference. Um, so, the the from from Sunday onwards, it's a conference. So, I'm over here for for three or four days at a conference, decided to fly in early because there's a couple of bands that are playing that I work with. Oh, um, cool. So I'll come over and just grip and grin and see him. And Who, So who's playing tomorrow you're going to see? Uh, Machine Head. Machine Head, Machine right. Head's playing tomorrow. Oh, that's where they're playing now. They're playing at Marathon Music Works? No, they're playing at um, Exiting. Oh, that'll be a great show. Holy that's shit. Not, that's like a 500 cap room. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. That'll oh, my great. God. Yeah. That's awesome. That'll be fun. So you know it's a band I've worked with for a long time. Great guys. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you actually watch the show? Or you go to just say hi and... No, with them. without a doubt, I watch the show. Yeah, yeah. awesome. You know, and it's one you're of my still a fan, fan of music. I mean, still that's, a fan. That, that never goes through, away. You know? know, and and one thing when you're in your own territory, you got shit to do, you got work to do. Um, so often, when when you're seeing a show, you know, in in Stockholm or in Sweden, or if I'm at a festival there, it's yeah. You know, sometimes you you know, I got seventeen or eighteen bands I work with playing a Sweden rock festival or Copenhagen festival. Mm. So Copenhagen is just this amazing festival with this amazing lineup, and at the end of the festival done a fucking great job and done a lot of cool shit saw one band you know right, yeah, yeah. it's right. like fuck I saw the like like this year like I saw the last you know 30 minutes of Aussie you know that right. was about it um, but that was like you said my, my, that's your job you know you get there and you yeah. do your fucking job and you know did Zach do this last tour with Ozzy amazing okay and you saw the tour yeah absolutely yeah. awesome that's rad <clears throat> yeah those two I mean that's kind of like striking gold post Randy um I, wow, I almost mentioned my friend Randy Torres. That's Randy so Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. <laughs> um, well, and he had Jakey e. Lee too. He's, al- e. he's always had great guitar he's had great players. Guitar players, but Zach was like the, the to me. It's like next to Randy Rhodes. I mean, Zach Wild was like I mean, so many bars above anyone you can think of. That to play I one hundred percent agree. I saw uh, Darren's also a big Guns guy. I saw uh, it was Axel and his L.A. And cats. The dudes, yeah. It was really just Axel and Dizzy Reed, but um, they were amazing. By the way, this is two thousand twelve. And Black Label Society opened. And, I mean, it was just fucking 60 minutes of meltdown. Yeah. It was unbelievable. He, he's you, a, you know Zach was in Guns N' Roses, right? Uh, during, the, during the post... The during, like, when slash, Josh Freese was in the band? Uh, during the post slash stay. Well, in and in. Like, it was like uh, Robin, actually, Robin Fink for a minute. Robin Fink. It was before that. It was okay. kind of like... Robin um, Fink. Robin Fink. Wow. Um, if Robin Thicke started playing guitar for Guns N' Roses, uh, that would be a different Twilight Zone world that we'd yeah, be living totally. in. Yeah, totally. I'd be in, though. So how long did well, that well, last? In Guns is, a, is an exaggeration. He he kind of jammed with them a few times. Gotcha. Axel kind of gave him a call and said, come on down. And, and he was like, yeah, no worries. So he went down and, and jammed. And, uh, you know, I don't think it... Didn't do any shows, I don't think? No, didn't, did no shows. Didn't go anywhere from that. Was this before Zach got sober? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think even if you're sober, working with Axel's got to be tough. Although, you know, I tend to, as the years go by, I tend to look back at the whole Axel thing with a lot more sympathy. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, you know, my friend Matthew Mayfield and I talk about this all the time. He's a massive Guns fan. And when Axel refused to go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 
you know, he wrote a letter, like an open letter to Rolling Stone or something, and everyone was bitching about it. I kind of thought his letter was good. Yeah. Where he was like, it look, go- I'm, pr- I'm proud of the work we did, but I don't have great... Mo- it's so funny to think about now, because they've been on the Not In This Lifetime tour forever, but... Yeah. He was like, I've got this new band that I think's great, and they were. I saw them. Yeah. It was three hours of fucking professional, right. tight playing. And he was like, I don't want to show up. They're kind of using us for ratings, and they want us to get back together. It's not something I want to do right now. I'm like, that's pretty reasonable for an insane guy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, pretty punk rock, too, just to, to deny the Hall of Fame. Like, be like, no. I mean, it was respe- he respectfully denied it. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was cool. I mean, would I lo- have loved to see him up there and not Miles Kennedy? Of course. I wouldn't have minded seeing Josh Freese play with Guns N' Roses. I can say that. Yeah. It was cool that Adler and Sorum were up there for the Hall of Fame. Oh, the reunion's been amazing. And no, no, no. I mean, I mean, at the Hall of Fame performance. Sure. See yeah. them together. Yeah, it was cool. And Sorum was just out there playing like tambourine. Well, from what I, from little I know, and maybe you you know more, I don't think Matt Sorum and Axel are going to be in the same room for a long time. Yeah, I don't think they go along. I think that relationship. I don't think that'll work. No. Yeah, because, I mean, I remember when it, rumors were going around about the GNR reunion and this tour we all heard that Slash and Axel made up and this, I mean, everything was cool. And, you know, we, I remember we probably all talked about it too. We're like, like, Oh, can, can Adler hang with like a three hour set? And they're like, well, surely they'll get Matt Sorum at the least. And then Matt Sorum came out and said like, we haven't talked in forever. I have no plans to. Yeah. So, well, the dude, they've, they've had the same drummer Frank for a Fair, while. He's amazing. Yeah, he's a badass. You know, and I don't think Adler can play anything outside of Appetite, even if he could last three hours. Right. But right, I think yeah. he's capable of... That's true. Yeah. The drumming... Yeah. I mean, Matt Swarm's an amazing drummer, and mm-hmm. the stuff on the Illusion Records is... Yeah. And, and you yeah. know, for, for rock and roll drumming, Stephen Adler was amazing, but... Oh, yeah. Well, I, I was fortunate enough at the GNR show here in Nashville. Um, it was one of the four shows, I think, that Adler came out and played two songs. Right, yeah. It was here in Cincinnati and somewhere else. And I was just blown away that, like... I saw it online the night before, the morning of, like, oh, shit, Adler was there last night. I wonder if he's going to be here tonight. And sure enough, like, he met, came out and I think did, like, It's So Easy and something else. Mm. It, it was great. It was so it's good. Pro- yeah, probably Appetite songs. It was two Appetite songs, yeah. And so you actually work with Slash. You do Slash a Snake Pit. Uh, I do Slash Slash's band. Slash with Miles Kennedy yeah. and the Conspirators. Yeah. I want to show this pic. So one of the things that Darren, Darren brought us a bunch of gifts, by the way. We'll show all those, but she brought us... Slash's guitar pick. I'm showing that now to the YouTubers in yeah, YouTube YouTubers. land. So, for you being such a Guns fan, what's the how was it to interface with him? Was that, I mean, obviously you had all this experience being close to these people, but for you, for that being someone that you admired so much, what was that like adjusting to working with him and getting um, over that shit so you could do a good job? And you know what? Just he's just a great he's a great guy and he's a great artist. You know, and right. he's a you know a full on you know he, he's just phenomenal. You yeah. know, so it it wasn't easy at all. You know, it wasn't hard at all. You <laughs> it was, know, it was yeah. it was super easy. You know, yeah. he's a great guy. It wasn't easy at all. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, works hard. So you know, um, yeah, that's kind of a tough question. You know, because yeah. every now and again, there's a there's an artist that I'm like, man, this is you know, this is a bit kind of surreal. This is a little bit surreal. Yeah. You know? Have you ever through your various uh, professional shit that you do brush up with Metallica? Have you worked with them at all? Never worked with Metallica. Um, have some mutual friends and a couple of people that work for Metallica, which I know. Um, you know, Metallica is a band that I probably don't want to work with because I want to try to keep that. I want to kind of keep that pure because it know? does mm-hmm. change it a little bit, even if it's positive. You know, yeah. that's one thing I talked to Jay about um, on our last episode about Slipknot because, and I know you know the Stone Sour Cats and you work with Slipknot and stuff, yeah. but Jay, I didn't know, was a massive diehard Slipknot fan. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's sort of part of the story. Right, of exactly. how he got there to to being their drummer, mm-hmm. and uh, there's almost a sense of it where it's you have to sacrifice something to get that close to it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. How could you not? You know. Mm-hmm. But I think you can come out the other side of that, and it's positive. It's not like you're not like mourning this thing. No, no. it's not like meeting your hero and they're an asshole, and you're like that was a bummer. I wish I would have just never known. Yeah, yeah. yeah when you meet sure. them and they're great people to work with, it just takes on a different thing, right? E- exactly. And you got a job to do. Like the last time Metallica were there, was there in in uh, Sweden, which was earlier in the year, mm. I could go to two shows. I can just totally, totally unwind, totally take it all in on a yeah, on, on sure. a different plane rather than yeah having work to do and run around here and run. So around you saw there. him twice. Saw him twice. Yeah. What'd you think? Amazing. Yeah, I thought so it was. You saw great. the uh, the uh, the uh, in the first in the round arena tour. It was in it, this was in the round this year. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you probably got some interesting set list stuff too. Got some set nine changes. There was nine differences between the what, two shows. What were some of the cool things you got for those shows? See, this is where I get. I knew you were going to ask this, and this is mm-hmm. where I get really, 
really bad. Hey, what did they play? I've actually got the set list on my on my phone. The guys gave me a the, the, oh, cool. the people I know and the crew gave me a, yeah. a set list of each. Nice. Um, so um, you know, and and people will say, well, what was what was it like? What was this song like? Or what was Bell's like? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. I can kind of, <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I don't know how some people can be so, you know, I love it. I love listening to your to yeah. your uh, tales from the road and go, man, that's so cool. Um, but I can just more differentiate what was good and what was fucking great. Right. right. Well, right. sometimes you go to a show and you just kind of take in the whole experience. The whole, you know, yeah. Like, you know, I, I think probably because of this podcast, like when we've seen Metallica, like I'm really trying to pay attention to every song because we're going to talk about it on the show and stuff. Yeah. I'm not sitting there making notes on my phone or anything. Like, I don't want to be that disconnected. Yeah. But uh, I do get it, though. I've been to shows before where I'm like, I don't care what they're going to play. I just want to enjoy this whole experience. Exactly. Yeah. And that's got to be a nice break for you, too. I mean, as we've already mentioned, most shows that you're at, you're in some capacity working. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So it's nice to be, and especially a band you love so much, you know, to be able to just enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Are you a fan of Hardwired? I, I like Hard. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely side A heavy. Yeah, you know? um, that's the consensus. But, but I am a fan. I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of the record. You know, and yeah. the songs are going live great. Yeah, you know? yeah. like um, very well. Like Moth is crazy. Love it. Like Moth, for instance, the first show, I can't remember it at all. Except <laughs> except the, the drones. drones. Yeah. You know, I remember right. it was great, and the drones were just man, this is so cool. And then the song finished. That's one song I can remember going, oh, I didn't really take note. You know, cause, <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. Because I was focused elsewhere. But Because um, of the dark magic happening. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. The dark drum Imagine magic. plucking someone out of simply like 1972 and putting them at that shit. They're, they're, they're for sure thinking it's like witchcraft. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, not only that, but I mean, like the, the, even just the technology of what they're looking at, like the screens going up and down, yeah. how much louder it is than it was back then. Yeah, totally. I mean, that, those PAs back then couldn't keep up. You yeah. know, that's why the Beatles stopped touring. Well, that was in the mid '60s. True, but not much. You said what '72? Yeah, so a couple years later. Didn't <laughs> they stop touring in? They stopped touring in '65. 65? Really? '65? Damn. They did some Rubber Soul, which Rubber Soul was '60. 60- 66. No, 65. I thought it was they did weird. Help and Rubber Soul in '65. They used to do two records a year. That's crazy. And then after that's when they went down to one. 66 Revolver, 67 Sgt. Pepper, yeah. 68 White Album, 69 Abbey Road, 70 Let It Be. Crazy. That is insane. You know, one of the first bands that kind of tried to get on top of this PA thing was Pink Floyd. They bought their own sound system mm-hmm. that they toured with, and then when they weren't touring, they were renting it out to other bands. No one had ever really done that before. Oh, really? They were kind of like, you know, from the business side of that. Pretty smart. I mean, really yeah. smart. Yeah. Especially back then, if, if they had like, you know curated this whole PA system to suit their show and to make it grander and, and bigger and Right, louder. acid just shoots out of it. Exactly. <laughs> Who, who'd they rent it out to? Do you know? I think just any other band at that level. They wanted it, yeah. They had like a production house, you know, and like they would just store it where they, they also like had their own studio where they record shit, so. Mm-hmm. Like they a, just probably had, like a Led Zeppelin maybe. Or, and they didn't, they never were even involved with it. It was like their management. Right, right yeah, yeah, yeah. They was just a way for them to make money when they weren't touring. Yeah, yeah. Pretty smart. Yeah. I mean, nowadays there's bands that own buses that lease them out when they're not touring and stuff. Absolutely. Well, Metallica owned two um, two record uh, covers, right? They, that's right. Metallica yeah. actually owns vinyl pressing. That's right. They press their own, press vinyl. Their own vinyl, and I guess they press other people. I think they're making coin off it when it's right. when they're not using that's it. So, cool. and Super then they smart. they always um, yeah, because vinyl is such a, a long you know, long waiting time to get it made, right, you know, yeah. a long lead time for it. Takes a while, yeah. So, so if they need something super quick, it's like, well, that's my, that's my press. They Fire can up ju- the machine, they can, let's they go. They can jump the line, you know. So. I would love to be able to have one of my records pressed on the same press that Hardwired was pressed on or, but, yeah. or the, 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 reissue, the uh, remastered You box may set. have. There aren't that many. I know there's one here oh, in Nashville. Pressing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's United Record Pressing here. Oh, sorry. Did you just say that? No. Okay. <laughs> um, I got mine Good. in f- pressing the, uh, some place in Florida. It, it's just called, I think, Vinyl Press, Vinyl Record Company or Vinyl Pressing Company, right. something like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's still. I mean, it's it's gotten more popular in the last you know ten fifteen years, I think. Yeah, especially with record store day and stuff like that. But um, I think I don't think there's as, as few as like cassette duplication places now. I think there's like one or two left. Right. Yeah. It's kind of having a weird resurgence though. Cassettes in in a niche way, I yeah. guess. CDs are still easy to order. Yeah. That's easy to... I mean, the cost on that's nothing. All right, Darren, I'm going to put you on the spot here. All righty. We did not prepare this. No. Uh, but I'm just looking at these people that you work with, and of course, no dirt shit. We don't no. care about that. 
But I'm I'm just gonna pick some of these bands out, and if you just have an anecdote or a memory, something interesting about them that we would not know without access to your uh, your brain. Okay. How about Alice in Chains? One of the things you brought, by the way, I want to show the people at home. Generously, I might add, yeah. he brought he brought the new uh, Alice record, Rain or Fog, on vinyl, that I absolutely can't wait to hear. It's gotten great reviews. I think Nick Nick Raskin Linux probably did that one too. Am I correct? I think he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did. He's. I think he's done all the ones since they all the ones they go back together, together. Duval, yeah. which, which is great. The the yeah. Nick's an awesome dude. He lives. He lives in. He lives in. Well, south of Nashville, but he's yeah. He's based here now. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think he went to Seattle to record that one. I asked him what he wanted to say about it. So my memory of Nick Raskin Linux. Go. <laughs> Is there a question or just... I don't uh, know. Just... Like, what pokes out to you? I mean, I'm a huge Alice fan. Um, what do they like to work with? Or did, is there a memorable show? Or Obviously, did you ever do the Lane Staley days? I no. Mean, the, okay, so you're all William Duvall on. Um, recent, more recent than that. Oh, and okay. I tried to sign to uh, to Spitfire at the time. I tried to sign Jerry Cantrell on his... Um, his solo yeah, stuff. On, on his solo stuff, yeah. 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 So... Uh, which were great records as well, which Robert Robert played on. Yeah, Robert played on oh, Jerry right, Cantrell's yeah. record. So, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. so awesome. Robert's been around. Robert was also in Black Label Society yeah. too. So yeah, I got to, a short time. Yeah. Got to Did he see tour him. with them or just play the record? He, he played with them. Okay. You know, often uh, Zach would do double duty. Black right. Label would be on the same festival or you know, on the same tour as Ozzy. So he'd be playing Black Label and he'd be playing Ozzy. So, so, so Robert did that. So. That's so cool. That's so fun. So I saw Robert a few times a playing with Zach. Yeah. You have a favorite Alice record or a favorite... Uh, um, new record is great. Every record I've had since William is great, but Dirt is just phenomenal. Dirt, Dirt, yeah, Dirt. Dirt is one of those game-changing start to finish It's a pretty classic like 90s rock record. Yeah, Dirt and, Dirt and Jar of Flies together for me are just... Yeah, yeah Jar of Flies, Jar of Flies is, great. is great. Unbelievable. Okay, we've talked Slash. We've talked Slipknot. Did you just do this last uh, Stone Sour cycle, Hydrograd? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, I follow Corey Taylor on the socials. I, I don't know much about Stone Sour, but I, I think Corey Taylor is such a fascinating dude. He's pretty funny too. Mm-hmm. And uh, that Hydrograd tour, I mean, he posts like every day. He's you know whatever city they're in, that, playing big clubs and theaters and shit. I mean, that had to have been a successful tour for everybody, right? It looked massively like it. successful. You know, and, and Corey is is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and he's probably one of the most talented singers at the moment. Yeah, Absolutely, he's a great singer. he's just fuck, phenomenal. Um, but uh, but Josh. Uh, Josh Ram, the uh, guitar player, is a massive Metallic fan. Oh, cool! Massive diehard. Really? You know, absolutely. We got to get him Pro- on the show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's probably one of the biggest. We're always nerding out over Metallica. You know, okay. actually, last time he was in Sweden, um, I hooked it up and and uh, we had a. They were over there for four days doing promo. Yeah, and had a Sunday off, so we kind of stuck him with the tour manager on the uh, on the train and sent him down to Cliffs. You know. Oh, cool! Oh, you that's know, awesome. Cliffs, Little Stone. That's you've never cool. seen it before. Have I hit him? He, he had never seen it. Have no. you been? Obviously, you I, I've been there. Yeah. yeah, but it, it's not that easy to get to. Really? You know, it's um, yeah. Nowadays, you know, with the, with the new roads and um, yeah. especially in, in a touring band, you don't right. you don't do that. So. We've had a, we've had a few listeners write in, tell us about visiting. Like well, Chris here just has been there, and yeah, um, numerous fans of of the show have sent in pictures of them at the, at the Stones. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. It'd be cool to see one day. I've been to the Strawberry Fields near Central Park. Yep. Um, it's right by the Dakota where John Lennon was killed. Mm-hmm. It's not like the spot where he died. He died like right in going into the building. But um, one of the times I went, it was actually pretty solemn. There was yeah. a, a chick playing violin like on a bench nearby playing like uh, Imagine or In My Life or something. A few people were crying. Yeah. But then other times I went and didn't, it, it, I, I didn't feel what I thought I'd feel. Right. You yeah. know, like what was it like for you to visit Cliff's? Was it weird for you? Was it, it, it? It was a little weird. Maybe not. Not actually the stone. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like check it out and take it in. But I kind of stood on the road a little bit and just kind of. It was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you could you could imagine, you know, especially back then, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the cold. How scary that must have been. How scary! Literally in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah. Um, One know. of the most powerful pictures that I know of of the boys is. So the the bus fiasco happens, you know the whole the whole story. We know the story, yep. and then uh, they finally just like get their clothes and get they they're going to fly home. You know they're going to cancel the rest of the tour with yeah. the Anthrax, and it's them like getting out of the car at the hotel to go into the airport. Just the three of them, yeah. no cronies, no management, and they just look a super exhausted, but b just like 
completely fucking traumatized. Oh, yeah. It's kind yeah. of fucked up that someone took that picture, but yeah, you can see a lot of that. I think it may be in the back of the front book, but... I think you're right, yeah. Man, it's just... That's dark. It's, it's heavy. It's very dark. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Look at that photo. And hearing you say it like it's in the middle of nowhere, it was fucking freezing, middle yeah. of the night. You know, like the stories of James running up and down the road in socks. You know, man, it's, looking for the black ice. Looking yeah. for the black ice. You know, right? It's, it's that 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 was more 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 than the actual stone, right? Because you know, the stone isn't where the crash, right. Where the crash happened. Right. How far like, away is it? I, I think it's it's pretty close. Okay. You know? um, cool. Yeah. All right. How about okay? Let's do a little bit of Gene Simmons. <laughs> let's, we'll make this the last one. Okay. Um, Gene Simmons is a, is a character. Yeah. Um, yeah. You still get his. He still sends emails when there's something uh, like he, he sent me a an email of some um, uh, a piece of chewing gum that he chewed on TV that um, that they auctioned off and sold for two hundred thousand dollars or no, something what? like that. Yeah, something. So uh, <laughs> he, he he's a character again. One of these ones that you hear some bad things about him, but sure, yeah, the guy's a money man, and um, you know we just did this vault recently oh did you do the vault yeah yeah holy shit yeah. all right we haven't talked about this okay and so this is this i think is pretty pretty cool so i hope i i say it right in gene's favor um so the, the vault was kind of expensive but actually not that expensive when you break it down when you actually well, there were several different tiers right several different tiers yeah in europe not as many okay yeah so, like to get the actual vault, what's the lowest tier? What did it cost here? Um, it's not that bad. No, it's not that bad. It's like um, a couple hundred bucks or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and it's like it looks like a vault. It's like a money vault. Yeah, and you get like 150 unreleased songs. Yeah, some, and it's a heavy duty vault. It's actually right, there's yeah. some value my, there. My friend uh, actually did it here in Nashville. Okay, well, when, so, when he came through. So then the second tier uh, is you pay a little more and you get to meet him. Yep. But he comes to like. A conference center, and everyone who bought that experience goes there, and they're all there together. Mm-hmm. And then he's been doing shit where like Peter will show up, Peter Chris, yeah. Ace Frehley will show up. Oh Paul, wow, Polish Polish showed up a few times, and they'll they'll play like some acoustic songs, and then you get to talk to him for like five minutes. Yeah, and then he signs it, personalizes it. Crazy. Now that one's more expensive, maybe a thousand bucks or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now what I think everyone got butt hurt about because it just made the 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 shorthand headline was. There's one that's like twenty grand, right? Yeah, <laughs> and he'll come to your house for two hours, and the whole thing was within reason. He'll do whatever the fuck you want. If you want him to play a gig, he'll play a gig. If you want to just, if you want him to fucking go fishing with you, he'll do it. <laughs> with a Metal Gear podcast lure, exactly that we're having <laughs> made by the, our yeah, friend Clint. We're sending one to Gene. Yeah, Darren's gonna send it to Gene for us. But I think what most people did is they just got all their friends to each put in a thousand bucks, and then they made it like a party at their house. Because yeah. I think you're allowed to bring ten people. Oh, ten. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So when you say that you helped work that vault experience, what were you involved with? We, with that? we released it. So, um, so for instance, on on the on the day when he was there, um, one of the things like he he come and did that. So we set up a venue for him to play. Um, he come and and did that experience where all the fans got to watch it, you know, and he played some acoustic stuff and he talked about it and there were some stories. There mm-hmm. was a, like a narrator that travels with him that, that does the interview. And then uh, he takes like five minutes, five minutes just to change locations. And uh, and then that's where he presents you with the uh, with the vault. So we kind of like gave him the vault and brought you in and you... you you know, you got to talk with him. You got a photo with him. He'd sign it. He'd write whatever you want on it. Yeah. And that's when it's clear. And that's when I want to be, you know, be clear to everyone. He kind of said to us, "No talking." You know, this is my turn with the fan, and the fan's turn with me. So, you know, don't, you know, keep keep well out of it. And so he uh, really wanted that time to be maximized and special. Exactly. For the fan, for the fan experience. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's Exactly. Awesome. You know what? And, and um, you know, we had some food there for him to eat and all that kind of stuff. Didn't touch it. Just went for hours. Some of them went for two minutes. You know, some of them went for a minute. You know, if someone had nothing to say, well, you know, it just kind of moved on naturally, you know? Right. Were, some, these, were these unreleased Kiss songs or Gene Simmons songs? They're like, well, you they're, can answer that. They're yeah. Gene Simmons songs. Okay. Yeah, they're from the from the beginning of time. There was uh, stuff he did with Van Halen Brothers. Right. You know, there's a song he did with Bob Dylan on there. Well, you know, right. he discovered Van Halen. Yeah, oh yeah, I know that. Oh, well, according yeah. to him. I mean, yeah. Yeah. according to the legend. Right, according to him, yeah. He discovered Bob Dylan. Too. <laughs> <laughs> he is Bob Dylan, he according is. to legend, of course. Yeah. That is so cool that you worked that vault. Mm. Uh, can you shed any light on, uh, maybe not details, but was that a successful I- I- enterprise for him? It, it it was for us over there, definitely. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, 
That's cool. You know, and every fan walked away happy with it. See, um, I'm so glad we're talking about that yeah. because the, the the headline was Gene Simmons, who's the money, the money obsessed, whatever, is basically gouging his fans. Mm. And it really wasn't that. It was kind of the opposite. Like, he really wanted that vault to have a lot of value as an experience. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, he could have just released it, uh, whether it's in Sweden or in the U.S., as, as like this. So you just order it online, you get yeah. it, and that's it. Yeah. But he was making a whole tour out of it. Like, it, it's a whole experience. Yeah. Like, if he didn't want to do that, he didn't have to. And he sure as hell didn't have to call up Ace Fraley and Peter Chris and cajole them into coming out. Absolutely right. not. Yeah. He, he, that was and dude for 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 us for us nerds. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I know you're a Kiss fan. I like Kiss. I'm not, but we're we're here. probably in the diehard category. Yeah. To see him with Ace and Peter is just it's a huge huge fucking. Oh game. yeah, of course it is. Yeah, especially Peter. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome, dude. Yeah, that's and great. you know they've always I remember as as a Kiss nerd in Australia they did this Kiss convention, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I went to that where you you had the day before the show, you know, they had all the. Uh, all the costumes there, kind of what Metallica did recently. I don't know whether you guys saw that, the the museum. Yeah, I saw it. Oh, dude, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. So you got to go see all that. I got to go see all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. So, that's yeah. so awesome. So I just, I forget, Australia. So did you happen to see the Unmasked stuff when they came over there with Ace and Eric Carr was still drumming? Uh, no, no. That, that was, was, was pre me. It's yeah. this weird moment in time where the Kiss was like the Beatles in Australia. That right. was massive. The record bombed here. Complete. Unmasked. Yeah, yeah. It's 1980. It was a very. It was a pop record. Was that the one with "I Was Made for Loving You" on it? No. No, that's the record right before it. Same okay. producer. Okay. So, so "I Was Made for Loving You" was like the beginning. Yeah. It's this guy named Vinnie Poncia, and then they made "Unmasked," which is one. Of, it's my second favorite Kiss record, but it's very pop. They have a, the big hit was called "Shandy." Okay. And for some reason, dude, it was massive in Australia, and Crazy. they went and toured it. And it's one of the only tours with Ace and this beloved drummer that replaced Peter named Eric Carr yeah who died of cancer like 10 years later right yeah so that's an interesting moment in time that's like super tied to Australia yeah, yeah. I always th- thought that was that's fascinating that's so awesome yeah that's very cool are we ready for some metal madness I think let's we are let's do it yeah We've got, we've, we've got Darren's story, a, a plethora of information for you guys. Yeah, I was a bit sorry about that. No, no, that's, a, that's no one apologize. That's a good Don't thing. Don't you dare. Don't you ever apologize. <laughs> I for loved that. it. We need to do a part two next time you're here, and we'll do the dirt side of it. That's exactly, yeah. <laughs> we'll, wait, we'll wait until you retire, and then we'll do the dirt side of it. <laughs> now, Metal Madness, as everyone know the rules, we're going to pit these beloved songs against each other. Darren and I were emailing earlier today, and we sort of decided we're going to do Kill Em All versus Master Puppets. All right. Now, unlike the Jay Weinberg fiasco, where he kind of called me out for my method, and he wasn't wrong. Correct. Uh, we kind of got rid of certain songs early on that it wasn't as exciting as it could have been later. So did you go Jay's rather sound like hockey? I did. Okay. So some of them, is, these are going to seem absurd at first, but when it really gets down to it, we're going to be putting some barn burners against barn burners. So it's going to be fun. Cool. Best of two. Uh, wait. Best of three. Best of three makes it go on to the next round. Feel free to plead your case. Feel free to change your mind. Okay. Feel free to get upset and leave my house. I don't know. Here in the first round, I think this is going to be one of the easier ones. Or maybe not, depending on what you like. We got battery versus jump in the fire. I'm going battery. Has to be battery. Yeah, battery, yeah. right? Yeah. Jump yeah. in the fire is awesome. You know what bums me out about jump in the fire now is I automatically uh, associate it with Dave Mustaine. Yeah, which kind of puts a cloud a mis- over that's it. That's a mistaken riff for sure. Right? D- does that happen for um, Four Horsemen as well and stuff like that? It happens. It start. Uh, no, right. For some reason, I have it for Jumping the Fire because Dave always says I wrote all of that. He does say that for Call of Cthulhu too, and it started to happen to me with Call of Cthulhu, and I'm because I love that song so much, I'm just fighting it. Right. He recently said this on Twitter. He's like, someone was like, "What's better, Hangar 18 or?" Call of Cthulhu, and his, of course, his snarky response is, "Who cares? I wrote both of them." Yeah, well, they're 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 they are similar riffs. I mean, <laughs> I get your point, but hey, battery moves on. Darren, where yeah. do you stand on uh, Megadeth? Um, I work with them for a while. Okay. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm good with him to no extent as Metallica. Right. Metallica through and through. You know? Is Metallica right, your yeah. favorite metal band? Would Without that be safe to say? Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. Uh, that was nice. Battery moves on. Thing that should not be versus Motor Breath. Ooh. Very tough call. Uh, I'll start us off. I'm going to go Thing, although I love Motor Breath, and I've, of course, I've covered it on our forthcoming cover over Black End. Right, yeah. You mm. guys are going to be real surprised at how it sounds. It sounds like a bone. It sounds awesome. It sounds like bone yeah. of bear. Yeah. Uh, anyone going to jump in there? You went with the thing that should not be? Yeah, thingy. I'm going Motor Breath. Uh-oh. I, I'm going to go Thing, but it was a tough call. Ooh. It was a really tough call then. You feel yeah. pretty connected to Kill Em All? Very connected. Second, second, equal second favorite album with um, Injustice. Okay, right. You know? Wow, uh, okay. Which is, um, we had a quick little email about it. They're mm-hmm. so polar opposites in the Metallica realm, you yeah. know, Kill to, to Injustice. Absolutely. Um, but I kind of fluctuate be- between those two. Kill, Kill sounds a lot better, I think, than uh, Injustice. Oh, really? You think so? I think so, yeah. yeah. There definitely is a kinetic energy to kill them all, kill them all. That kill isn't, them all. That isn't their own justice. Right. We've, well, we've I mean, talked about you this. You have that, that energy, that, that, that raw power, that, yeah. that thrash, all those tones. I mean, it sounds aggressive. It, they were trying to make what they sound like live, probably, you mm-hmm. know, where justice was cleaner, yeah. really tight and precise. Yeah. You know? I'm not going to pretend that I like, am an expert on thrash metal because it's really more just I, I like Metallica. <laughs> right. But it is cool that sort of the first, one of the first thrash metal records is still kind of the best one. Mm. Now, I haven't mm-hmm. heard Creator. Or I'm sure there's people who will beg to differ, but Kill em All is the shit. Yeah, it, it really is. Shit, is. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one's going to be tough for me. Disposable Heroes versus the Four Horsemen. Ooh. Two sort of long, progressive yeah. juggernauts. I want to yeah. start on this one, okay. if you guys don't mind. I'm going to go Four Horsemen. I'm going Disposable. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, you got to break it out. Um. I'm going to go Disposable. Yeah, all right. Dang yeah. it. I My got man. denied twice. Yeah. What happened to this Aussie unity, mate? Well, well, Come on, mate. <clears throat> we're getting there. What do you think about the uh, Sweet Home Alabama section of Four Horsemen? That uh, sometimes they play it, sometimes they don't. You, you know, I never knew that um, that story. Yeah. I think I heard it here for the first time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, really? I was like, yeah. what the fuck? You know? See, man. And then went back and... Liz- yeah, like... Um, I... I Massive Metallica, Metallica fan, but I learn so much shit from you guys. I really do. <laughs> oh, awesome! Well, yeah. I mean, we learn stuff from the fans too. Like we'll get emails and we're like, huh, didn't know that, or someone sends us a link to an article or a video. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, if you if you can go listen to maybe our first ten episodes, and you, it's pretty clear that I was jumping into doing this as just like a lifelong fan, nothing crazy. Right. But since then, I have researched and listened to Metallica every day for right. two years. It's yeah. I'm feeling pretty confident these days. Yeah. But a lot of that has come from getting shit wrong. I, in, in fact, one of your first emails to us, I reread it today, and you were like, I kind of like how you guys are just like normal fans. It's not yeah. this encyclopedia. No, we've gotten, we've gotten stuff and wrong. And we still get times. shit wrong. Yeah, I mean, it happens, whatever. But that's what talking to your friends is like when you're yeah. at the bar. Oh, no, dude. They, it wasn't on that. David Stain did write Call of Duty. Yeah. It's like, oh, fuck. All right. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay, Orion, Cliff's swan song, instrumental masterpiece. Uh, versus Seek and Destroy. I'm going to say Orion. I'm mm. going Orion. Okay. What would you say? I probably would have gone Orion. Yeah. I like Seek. But here's the deal. I can kind of do without Seek. Give me all the Orion you got. I'll listen yeah. to Orion anytime, yeah. Um, that's, my, uh, that's my song, the burial song. You know you ever do those... To play at your funeral? Play at your funeral. Oh, nice. I just like fucking... Orion yeah. is yours? Orion, yeah. That's befitting. That's Orion cool. is one of them. Yeah. Mine's Sleepwalk. From... Um, by Santo and Johnny, the from La Bamba. Oh. You, know, you know that song? No. Sleepwalk? I don't. For real? I know Walk by Pantera, which would be a great funeral song. <laughs> gonna I'm gonna have to go with by, Barbie Girl. By, yeah, Barbie Girl is gonna be is gonna be at, at uh, Clint's for sure. That's crazy. You know Sleepwalk? What? It's from La Bamba? What am I? What, what? Yeah, the part. Spoke, what am I, spoke, fucking La Bamba? Spoiler die hard? alert! When, have you seen La Bamba? Where? Yeah, he dies in the plane. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the about gun. La Bamba. Right, but when he dies, and then he, 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 his mom finds out. Sleepwalk starts playing. Um, what do you? What do you? You want to play it? I was just gonna like pull it up as we we're talking about this. For real? This well, just surprises me. Sorry, I have to go to Spotify. I thought I had my phone. You fucking hurrying, hurrying, you f- hurrying, hurrying. You don't even own it. It's one of your. It's your song you're gonna play at your funeral, and you have to go to fucking Spotify. Real sad. Yeah, I know that. You know For real. Yep. Yeah. Ethan just passed away. 
Have some don't res- dude, have don't some put res- this in my head, man. Have some respect. Don't put that in my head, man. Well, I'm gonna ask you to play it. I'm not too. trying to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. All right, uh, Master Puppets versus Whiplash. <gasps> Ooh, I'm, I mean, Ooh. <clears throat> I have a reason for this. Whiplash. Ooh. I'm going puppets. Okay, let me hear your reason. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is. like who can say metallic? Who can say their own band name in a song and get away True. with it? Black Sabbath. Yeah. Black Sabbath and Anthrax. I think had a song called Anthrax. Wait, does Black Sabbath say Black Sabbath in the song Black Sabbath? I don't. Think or is they it just do. called Black? It's Sabbath? called Black Sabbath. And also Iron Maiden have the song called Iron Maiden, but they're referring to uh, the, the, tor- the torture. The torture. Exactly. Device. They're not Metallica referring because we're Metallica. Because we're Metallica. We'll stop. We'll never quit. And it became exactly. a, th- a nice live thing where they turned into the fan thing because you're Metallica. Right. Yeah. I'm going Whiplash. Although I think Master Pup is just absolutely phenomenal. That's but, crazy that Master Pup just got knocked off. This, my, yeah. this is like, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks getting taken down by the Predators. Right, the but Predators. that's kind of why I want to choose it. Because, like five years ago, whatever that was. Yeah. And here's the other deal. Whiplash, probably the greatest thrash song ever. It's so them. It reminds me of Jason singing the third verse, yeah. even though, of course, Cliff recorded it with them. It's fast and brutal and mm-hmm. fucking awesome. It's great, yeah. 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 And everyone expects puppets to win. And I like defying everyone's expectations. Well, you did. All right, moving right along. Sanitarium, welcome home, Sanitarium, versus Hit the Lights. And I'll start us off. I'm going Hit the Lights. Because, and I know you love Sanitarium. I'm just Hit the Lights is great. This is this is God. Sorry, Jay Weinberg. We should have done it this way last time. This is hey man. We gave, the... we gave Jay a good shake at it. No, that one did get did, did get fun for sure, but this is like... He was right, though. Uh, I'll go Sanitarium. I'm not trying to pick all puppets tunes, by the way. No, it's okay. I picked four. Follow movies. your heart, I'll go, dude. Oh, yeah, I'll go Sanitarium. Hit the lights. Hey. Knew it, without a doubt. Knew it, Darren. Without a doubt. It's like, because me and Darren had coffee, and you didn't come to the coffee. That's why they're like, hey, let's... There's really a grudge. There's Ethan a secret over. grudge. <laughs> one day we're going to do a Metal Madness. Let's just fuck Ethan over. Hey, it's, uh, Sanitarium is unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Great song. Beautiful song to play. Mm-hmm. Um, all that kind of stuff, but hit the lights is where it all began. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. varying reasons for for the reasons uh, for choosing these songs too. It's not just in my head anyway. No, I agree. Yeah. I think I think lyrically, hit the lights is kind of goofy, but it's one of those songs I don't even pay attention. It doesn't matter almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, just that first riff, the great chorus. How, how can they start? How can that be the first song? They weren't even a band. I know. They, they were not a band. And like, what, for, maybe, for such a shitty drama. Like like back then, everyone you know sure. the band said that everyone's yeah. like, man, you can't pay. Well, yeah, he took lessons after they recorded "Kill Them All." Exactly. Was that a leftover Leather Charm song or something? Was that a song that existed in one? I don't of know. I mean, that's what they. Uh, it's what they put, put on, on the Metal Massacre. Metal Massacre, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Darren. That's like it blows my mind that that's where it all started, and it's that. I I think a lot of "Kill Them All," including "Seek and Destroy," which we've already nixed here. <clears throat> how. How could they have written a song perfectly tailored for a stadium or an arena on their first record? I They're know. like 20 years old. It's crazy. crazy. It's insane. Um, okay. and, and, and back to that comment about the drummer, you know, don't, don't take that out of context. You know, um, everyone talking about, you know, sure about him, the band, James talking Including about James, James and, yeah. and Ron, Ron uh, McGovney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But to start it with like a drum, you know, like a yeah. drum, you know, a drum intro. Pretty ballsy. It, really. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of like you getting into that show. And getting the gig. There you go. Uh, all right, next. Uh, these, this is an interesting one. Leper Messiah versus No Remorse. I'm going No Remorse. I'll get No Remorse. Yeah, No Remorse. Yeah. yeah. What? Do, any reason? Any reasons poke out? I, I, I just, I mean, no disrespect to anything on puppets, obviously, but I, I love the, some of the riffs in this song. I love the on the chorus. Um, <laughs> sounded like you were doing puppets for a second. You're right. Um, uh, I love the. Uh, dun, 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 that's so good. I don't know. I, I, that, that's it's it's such a fun song. Um, yeah, great riffage. Can't complain. I definitely would have gone No Remorse. Also, I like Leper Messiah, but it doesn't. You know, I'm just okay with it. Right. Mm-hmm. No Remorse is badass. Oh yeah. Okay. No Remorse moves on. Uh, this one might be simpler for you guys too. I don't know. Damage Inc. versus Phantom Lord. Damage Inc. Damage, Damage Inc. Inc. Damage Inc. Yeah. 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 I love Phantom Lord, but I'm definitely going to listen to Kill 'Em All when I leave here. I, I can right. tell you that. <laughs> that this makes me want to listen to Damage Inc. 
Um, all right. Here's re- round two. It's going to start getting a little harder. Maybe not for this first one. I don't know. Once again, battery versus the thing that should not be. Track one, track three, go toe to toe. Uh, I'm going to do a battery on this one. I'm going to yeah, have to I'm go thing. Really? I'm going to do battery. Okay. Yeah, okay. I understand. I mean, I love the sludgy Cthulhu shit. Of course. Right, yeah, yeah. That's just, and, and the S&M version always kind of pops in my mind. His vocals are so good. That one's great, yeah. And they put that great echo on mm-hmm. his voice. But all right, Battery, I understand. Little, little side note, S&M. Um, uh, Desert Island disc, you know? I would never have thought about it until someone said it on the show the other day. You know, if we're going oh, to take... S&M I think S&M. I said it on a Metal Tales. I said, you know, if we're going to count live records, I think it's my favorite Metallica record. If you count live records, yeah, I mean it's. A, I would take it over Binge and Purge. It's a best of. It's yeah, that's it's crazy. a best of, and it's a rare treat to get all those load reload songs. Like we're never gonna hear Devil's Dance again, no. right. uh, unless no. it's in a doodle with Robin Kirk. Yeah, and then not only that with a full on orchestra, Outlaw Torn and, with an orchestra, and they did it amazingly. Yeah, you know, it wasn't overdone. They did it perfectly. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I, I've been because I'm do, I'm covering No Leaf Clover on our next EP. Right. Yep. I've been referencing that a, a ton, the original, and. Every time I listen to it, I'm like, God, this is so good. This, and, and now it wasn't even a studio recording. No, no. And it's, yeah, Michael Kamen just killed Did it. Did you procure a 140-piece orchestra for your cover? Yep, yeah. Okay, well, 136. Cool. But okay, the NSO. Who, who's counting, yeah. Um, disposable Heroes versus Orion. Tough call. Ooh. I'm going to say Orion. I'm going to say Disposable. Only because it's got lyrics. That get, you can hear it pop ahead. Mm. Orion is so... I heard someone on Tom Quee's show recently say that Orion's their favorite Metallica song, which, on one hand, how can you fuck with that? How, but how can your favorite Metallica song not have any James Hetfield singing? That's right. That's weird. Right? I'm going to go Damage Inc. Damage Inc.? This is Disposable Heroes oh, sorry, versus dispo- Orion. Sorry, Disposal. You're out of touch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go uh, Frantic. Sorry, I meant to say Disposable Heroes. You're out of touch. Ethan's not paying attention. Ten demerits. Oh, geez, they supposed to start with a D. Okay, two kill em all tracks going toe to toe here. Whiplash versus Hit the Lights. Ooh, that's a tough. That's one. That's pretty hard. Yeah, I voted for both of these in the last round. So did I. And justifiably so, then too. This is a tough call. Mm. Jay Weinberg's listening to this somewhere, going these motherfuckers. Yeah, these fucking idiots. Um, I'm going to say Whiplash. I'm going to go hit the lights. Okay. Whiplash. Okay. Finally, you guys are on the same page. <clears throat> yeah, mate. I, I, I would have been okay with hit the lights, too. Yeah, I'm but, okay uh, with Whiplash. Yeah. Either, either fine, but I mean, I, I was just thinking of the songs in my head, like which one, they both get me pumped up yep. and like excited, but I don't know, Whiplash is just fucking... Amazing. I think I can predict this one. No Remorse versus Damage Inc. Yeah, I think Damage Inc. Damage Inc. Gonna... Damage Inc. Without yeah. that. Yeah. Favorite, my favorite Metallica song. Is it really? Yeah. Nice. Well... It's it's heading to, to to some good places in this yeah. round. We've pretty much eliminated every song from Kill 'Em All except for one, which makes me which sad. Is weird because I feel like I kept voting for Puppets and Kill 'Em All kept winning, but yeah, well. So Whiplash is only we got thir- round three: Battery versus Disposable Heroes. I'm going Disposable. I'm going Battery. Okay. <laughs> what a way to open a record. I know. Yeah, absolutely. So good. <clears throat> well, let's face it. I mean, they're two juggernaut songs. I think I like Disposable Heroes for because that riff is so hard to play. So is Battery, though. Oh, God, yeah. I love them both. I, I'm yeah, so absolutely good. perfectly okay with Battery. I don't feel going. bad getting rid of Disposable Heroes. Right. Um, Whiplash versus Damaging. I'm going to have to go Damage. I want to give Kill 'em All some second slot love, but uh. I'm going Damage. Cliff's beautiful b- bass intro. Yeah, I'm gonna do damage. I'm gonna damage as well. Okay, it's unanimous. Sorry, kill them all. <laughs> I didn't know that was your favorite Metallica song. That's that's rad. That's yeah. I haven't heard anyone pick that yet. I don't think as a favorite Metallica yeah. tune. Oh, cool. What's your favorite Metallica song? Blackened favorite song. Uh, I when we did our top ten, that's a while ago. Yeah, at the time I think was Blackened. Okay, is it still? Is it different? I don't know. I'd have to sit down and write. Mama it out said. Probably Mama said. No. Yeah. I mean, God, No Leaf Clover is, is jumping in my top ten hmm. just because I've been spending so much time with it in the last week. Hmm. Um, but yeah, Black and still up there for me. It's got to be my, probably my number one still. All right, and to pick the greatest Metallica song of all time for today, for today, 
in the Metal Madness. We got Battery versus Damage Inc. I'm going to say Damage just straight up because I've spilled the beans that it's my favorite song. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. You can't but, get all the way here and then choose Battery. I know, but it's a tough call, you know? Battery versus Damage Inc. is what we're doing? Yes. Darren's favorite song. I'm going Battery. <sighs> Sorry, Darren. That's I, I, I can... Uh, Clint? I think I'm going to have to go Damage Inc. Oh. I love Damage Inc. so much. There it is. It's a great song. All right, let's give it up to Damage Inc. Well, Damage Inc. Damage, Damage Inc. does it. All right. Well, that was fun. That was really fun. Thank you so much for coming on the show and being so uh, generous with your stories and telling us about all all the cool shit you've done, dude. Yeah, it was, I mean, it, was a, it was a good hang. And I mean, gifting us with some amazing vinyl and oh yeah. So let's let's go through this. So out we got Allison Chains, Shine Down. Now this one I'm not sure I've heard of. Dimi Bourget, okay. their uh, Scandinavian uh, black metal. I um, like how they put on here black vinyl. Yeah. Okay. That's so cool, isn't that cool? Black, huh? Oh, it's black. <laughs> Now, Shine Down, I don't know much about other than that bully song, but I fucking love that bully song. Yeah. You know what song I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Check out that band if you ever get the chance to see them live. Which one? Shine Down. Shine Down, yeah. Oh, yeah, I will. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, and then Hailstorm. A couple of, couple of local heroes. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm guys. excited to yeah. listen. To, uh, we were talking about this before we were recording. Yeah. Um, Hailstorm is a national band. Uh, Lizzie Hale is a pretty prominent figure around town. Badass singer and guitar player. And uh, we have mutual friends, uh, and I've never really gotten into them. So I'm excited to put that record on the turntable and check it out. Yeah. Pretty stoked. Go leave us the iTunes review if you got a second. It's, it's the easiest way to support the show. Uh, go check out the Patreon if you want to get involved on a deeper level. We've got the EPs coming up. Don't forget about the party. Um, All sorts of things. Is there anything we can promote for you? Anything we can no, send good, people to? Just enjoy, enjoy music and pay for music. Go out there and support. Thank support. you. Yeah. yeah, buy the vinyl, buy the CD. Go to show. Stream it on Spotify. That's fine. But go. So if you're yeah. going to stream stuff on Spotify, go support artists in other ways. You know exactly. Buy the buy their merch. You yeah. know, just support the scene. It really goes a long way. Yep. You know, it's really not enough just to listen to it on YouTube or Spotify. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's a great parting yeah. message. With that, let's just get the hell out of here and say peace. Adios. See you guys. <laughs> Right, so what would you say? Then I would say, delete that. <laughs>